Maven is a one of the widely used build automation tool for Java projects. That's the reason there are many courses which talks about Maven as a developer point of view. Apart from developer, DevOps engineer also use Maven. But there is no clear information about what kind of activities a DevOps engineer can take care of while using Maven. That motivates me to create this Maven course. Welcome to my new course, Maven for DevOps Engineers. In this course, I am going to talk about Maven as a DevOps engineer point of view. By enrolling to this course, you are going to learn how a developer use Maven, activities of a DevOps engineer on Maven, nothing but what kind of activities he can take care, building Java projects using Maven, and also you are going to learn how to set up Maven and integrating Maven with Jenkins. Hope these concepts help you to use Maven efficiently in your DevOps workflow. In next lecture, we are going to see concepts which do we cover as part of this training. Thanks for watching and I am excited to see you in the course. Hello folks. In this lecture, we are going to see what and all topics do we cover as part of this training. First one is introduction section. Here we are going to see what is Maven and how Maven helps to your DevOps engineer and resources what do we need to follow this course. In next section, we are going to prepare Maven environment on Windows. Here we are going to see installation of Java and installation of Eclipse and we are not going to install Maven over here. Why? Because whenever we install Eclipse by default Maven comes. Next we are going to see create a first Maven project and Maven coordinates. Default directory structure of a Maven project. Steps involved in building a Java project. Next Maven goals and at last building first Maven project. In next section, we are going to talk about Maven goals and repositories. Here we talk about form.xml, trans2 dependency, Maven repositories, and pushing Maven project onto GitHub. In next section, we are going to deal Maven on Linux. Here we need a Linux system. For that, I am going to use AWS Cloud. So, preparing a Maven server. Next, set up Maven on Linux and building Maven project on Linux commonly used Maven goals, creating a project with Maven archetype, next settings.xml and at last deploying an application on Tomcat server. Whatever application we build over here that we are going to deploy on Tomcat server. In next section we are going to see Maven on DevOps workflow. In this section we are going to see how we can use Maven in continuous integration. Here we need a Jenkins server so I am going to set up Jenkins server again on AWS cloud. Then we will add Maven server as a agent to the Jenkins and build a Java project on agent nothing but on Maven server. In this section we are going to see DevOps learning path and some additional resources. What courses you can learn next as part of your DevOps journey and bonus lecture about coupon codes of our other courses and creating an AWS account which you don't know while doing this course. You may come here and check out how to create an AWS account. Install git bash, install mobile xterm and install tomcat. These installations are needed to practice this course but most of the people already set up this. That's the reason instead of adding in between of our course I kept it as a separate section. So if you are really not aware of this, you can come over here and check out. Alright, that's all for this lecture. See you in the next lecture. Hello folks. Thanks for enrolling for my course. First, let's start with what is Maven. Before giving a generic definition about Maven, let's see what is Maven official definition. Maven is a software project management and comprehension tool. Based on the concept of project object model POM or POM, Maven can manage a project build, reporting and documentation from a central piece of information. As a overall, it is going to take a concept of POM or project object model and it helps us to manage project build, reporting and documentation from a central piece of definition. Before understanding more deeply about this definition, let's go and understand what a developer does do in the regular basis so that we can come for a conclusion that how 
maven helps to a developer which eventually becomes our definition let's go and see what are the day to day activities of a typical developer i have collected quite common day to day activities of a developer that is usually they start writing the code in his favorite ide then compile the code locally test it once it is tested then he create a package and he deploy it in a local application server in case if he has a local application server just to validate that his code is working on his local system once that is done he will be pushing the working code onto the source code repository or source code management this is the quite common activities what he do but the challenge over here is while writing his application code or while working on the project it is a quite common behavior that we use some third party libraries or packages so whenever we want to compile test and create a package we need to make sure that all the relevant packages are available to build our code otherwise it doesn't work right so as a developer i need to manually download all the packages which are required to run my application let's assume that i have downloaded and i compiled it and it's working fine and i can able to deploy it but the problem here is in the last step again i cannot push the all packages into the source code repository right the name itself it is saying that source code management like a github or bitbucket it maintains only source code we don't push all the third party libraries okay now some other want to compile it and deploy into some other systems how does it possible it is difficult right let's assume that you have given the your packages as well as part of your source code okay the other party or other team members or even i can say devops engineer could able to build it and he deployed it after some period of time you started developing few other features where you need to pull the again latest libraries or third party packages into your application again it became a problem that you need to download the latest packages onto your local system while doing testing also you need to provide the same packages to the people who ever using this code it is quite a difficult problem right instead of that one how it will be if i give you a single file which tells about that what is the packages are required or what are the libraries are required to run this application and that file itself can able to identify and download those packages Yes that is where maven comes into the picture so maven can able to download all the third party libraries which are required for your application and it also do the compilation test and even deployment of the applications not only that one if there is any updates in the third party libraries or packages which you are using then you just need to update that file it automatically downloads whenever you are compiling or testing your code it's good right so maven can help us that build your application with the all the required packages with the minimal efforts sharing only source code for the community or people who ever want to use your application along with the file which mentions that what libraries does it required that file we call it as a pom.xml anyway we are going to talk about pom.xml more detail in the later sessions for now yes maven can help a developer to build deploy test his code efficiently now you may ask that how does it work in the devops engineer level that we are going to discuss in the next lecture thanks for watching and see you there in previous lecture we were talking about maven how it will be useful at the developer level it helps him that compile the code downloading all the dependencies and building the code and even packaging the code but how does it work at the devops engineer level now let's see that once developer is tested his code and if it is working fine obviously he need to check in his code into the source code management in this example just consider that git as a source code management once it is pushed as a devops engineer again you need to take that code and we need to build the artifacts out of it right artifacts nothing but the outcome of the source code so whenever you are doing that even you need to know that what and all dependencies does it required once you have taken those dependencies you need to build it once you build it you need to run unit test cases once that is done you may use it as a deployment as well then who will do all this stuff that is where maven comes into the picture so maven helps even at devops environment level to download the dependencies build unit test and deploy the applications
So anyway, we are going to see how we are going to use Maven at the developer level and also DevOps engineer level. Whenever we are working at developer level, I am going to use Maven with the Eclipse. So we will be installing Eclipse in our local system in the sense I am going to install on my laptop and we'll start writing some Java applications. Don't worry, I am not going to write any complicated code. We can get the some templates. I am using those templates and we'll see how a developer is going to use the Maven. Then with help of that one as a DevOps engineer, what we can do at the DevOps environment level. All right, that's all for this lecture. In next lecture, I'm going to talk about what and all resources do you need and where do you get help if you struck up somewhere. Thanks for watching and see you there. Before proceeding further, I would like to update some of the prerequisites which helps you to get more out of this course. And also you can complete it in a quicker manner. That is Linux Basics, Git Basics and AWS EC2 Service. If you don't know Linux Basics, maybe you can check out my dedicated course on Linux for Cloud and DevOps Engineers. And also if you don't know Git Basics, again I have a dedicated course on Git for DevOps Engineers. You can check it out. Next, AWS EC2 service, it is just straightforward steps, but it is quite easy to understand. Maybe you can check out in our YouTube channel. Next thing, resources which are required, that is you should have an AWS account and GitHub account. With this, you can able to find the resources which we are using in these lectures under my GitHub URL as mentioned over here. During this course, if you have any questions, please ask me in the Q&A section. I will try to answer your questions at my level best. If you still reach out to me directly, maybe you can check out our social media platforms. We will be available over here if it is really necessary. That's all for this lecture. See you in the next lecture. Hello folks. In this section, we are going to see how to prepare Maven environment on Windows. We have already seen what and all topics do we cover over here. But let's see why do we need each of this topic. First we are going to install Java, then install Eclipse. Eclipse is one of the widely used IDE tool for Java. That's the reason we are using Eclipse so that we can feel how the developers can create the Maven projects. Then by using Eclipse we are going to create our first Maven project. Don't worry we don't require any coding skills. There are some predefined templates those we are going to use it. Then Maven coordinates. While building our Maven project, it asks for some coordinates. We are trying to understand what are those coordinates. Then default directory structure, whenever we create a Maven project, how does it looks like? Then steps involved in the building a Java project, like how do we compile, test, build and deploy. To build our project, we should know about Maven goals. Here we are going to talk about Maven goals. At last, we are going to build our first Maven project. These are the concepts we are going to cover in this section. So let's jump into next lecture to install Java. Hello folks, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to see how to install Java. As we discussed, we need Eclipse and Maven to proceed with our course. But without Java, it is not possible to execute our Maven commands or even Eclipse. So we are going to install Java on our Windows system. To install Java, first we need to download Java packages. For that, just search for Java JDK download, which will take us to the arkil.com website. And here we can download our Java SE packages. Click on the first link. Here we can see the latest version of Java. At the time of recording this video, we have Java SC 15. Now we should download it for Windows, right? We need to go to Oracle JDK download page to download it for Windows. So click over here and if we scroll down here, we have Java packages for different operating systems. We are going to choose Windows 64 bit because my operating system is Windows 10 at this moment. Let's download it. While downloading, we should accept license agreement. So click on this checkbox to download the JDK packages. It takes a while to get it downloaded. We'll wait until it gets downloaded. All right, download has been successfully completed. Let's open this one in the folder and start installing the Java. So this is the packages which we just downloaded. Let's double click on this one to install it. 
you should have admin privileges to install these Java packages. I am already admin on this account, so there is no issue. I mean to say on this system. Alright, so this is the welcome wizard to set up our Java. Let's go, nothing to change over here. In this page, we can change the Java installation path. By default, it is picking up C drive program files Java. Let it be in the same location. If you wish to change, you can choose the change option. Alright, our setup of Java has been completed successfully. Let's close it. Once installation is completed, you can see the Java packages under C drive program files Java. This is where Java installation has been done. And if you click on this one, you can see the bin, conf and few other directories. Now we need to set up our Java environment variables to make it work across the system. For that, we should go to this PC properties. Directly we can double right click on this PC and go to properties and advanced system settings and environment variables. To come over here, we have another method that is just search for control panel and system and security, then systems. This is also brings us into the same page. Either way, we can come over here and go to advanced system settings, environment variables. This is where we need to set up system variables. Whenever we set up system variables, this particular application will be accessible across the system irrespective of whatever user you are. So we are going to set up over here to set up. First, we need to update the path of our Java. I mean to say where it has been installed. So edit the path and we need to copy the location where we have installed java if you remember this is where we have installed but to set up path we need to give the bin as well so i'm going inside bin till here i am copying so add new path and click on ok we need to set up one more environment variable that is java underscore home for that we need to create a new system variable so click on new java underscore home and the path of java where it has been installed this time we need not to give the bin because it is still jdk level okay and okay that's it i can say we have configured our system variables to validate it whether it's working fine or not just go to command prompt execute java version command you can see here java version 15.0.2 has been installed it is working fine and one more command we can execute is java c java c nothing but compilation of the java application we haven't provided any application so it is giving that you need to include few more parameters anyway it is saying that our java installation has been successful and working fine in next video we are going to see how to install eclipse thanks for watching and see you in the next video Hello folks, in previous lecture we have installed Java. Now it's time to install Eclipse. For the people who doesn't know about Eclipse, Eclipse is one of the widely used IDE tool for the Java developers. So they will write their code, compile it and even deploy by using the Eclipse. There are multiple plugins. But in our case, I just want to show how the developer is going to work with Eclipse and how we can use Maven. That is the reason we are using Eclipse. So we need to download Eclipse for our system. So go to the download button. And at the time of recording this video, we have 2020 12 version of Eclipse IDE is available. Again, click on download button, which will take us to next page. Yep. From here, we can download the Eclipse executable files. Let's download it. It takes a while to get it to download. We'll wait until it get completes. Alright, our Eclipse download has been successfully completed. Now let me open where it has been downloaded. And to install Eclipse, just double click on this one. Of course, we have already installed Java, so the installation procedure should be smooth. So this is the first wizard while installing Eclipse. We can choose for which application we are going to install Eclipse. In our case, we are using it for Java developers. 
So let's click on the first option itself. In the first wizard, it looks for the Java. So we have already installed Java. It is picking up the Java installation path. Nothing to change over here. And also it is installing the Eclipse under users directory that is Velaxi. And this is the path. Now let's proceed with the installation. Installation has been completed successfully. Now let's launch it. Now it is looking for the workspace where it can store the projects which we create on Eclipse IDE. This is the default location, but I don't want to create under default location. Let me create the new folder. So I'm creating a new folder and I will name it as a projects and choose this folder. All right, from now onwards, all the projects which we create on Eclipse will be stored over here. And let's launch it. This is the default welcome page. Either we can close it or minimize it. So let me minimize it. And uh, yep, this is where we can minimize. And we can create a new Java project by choosing this option or else file new and we can create the projects. Anyway, we are going to see how we can create new projects in our next lecture. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. So far we have seen how to install Java and Eclipse. Now it's time to create our first Maven project. Before that, let's understand how this console looks. So there are various options over here and this is Package Explorer. Nothing but once we have created our projects, we can see the list of the projects over here. Even we can explore the content of the each package or each project. And here, whenever we open any file, that file get opens over here. And here, is there any bugs in the code or else the output of the code, whenever we execute that program, we can see that. Now, if you see the package explorer, there are few options where we can create different kind of projects. But in our case, we need to create a Maven project, right? For that, we should go with the file, new, and here we need to choose the project, but there are various options. We couldn't able to find the Maven option. So for that, we can go to others. Here we can search for Maven. That is M-A-V-E-N. Sorry. So Maven project. If I select Maven project and click next. Okay. In this wizard, we can able to choose the workspace location. If you do remember, we have chosen a workspace as under users, Velaxi, then projects, right? So that is the default workspace location. If you wish to change that one, we can choose by choosing the browser and we can change. But at this moment, let it be in the same location. So I'm just canceling it. And the next one is here, create a simple project. In case if you are good at developing a Java application, maybe you can choose this option. Whenever you choose this option, it just create a directory structure and you need to write your own programs. But I'm not a developer and I don't have that much skill. So I'm skipping this level, which means that I'm going to use the archetype selection. So if you choose this option, it is going to skip the archetype selection. If you don't select, it is going to display the archetypes. Now click on next. Here we can see list of the archetypes, whatever is available. I don't know, it is propagating. Yeah, here. You can see list of the archetypes but what is archetype if you search in the google same thing so i just searched for what is archetype in maven and if you click archetype in short archetype is a maven project template toolkit which means that it is like a template which comes with the default directory structure as well as some default application with that application we can do our changes it is like a some example projects kind of thing so in our case, anyway, we need that one. That is the reason we are going with the archetype. If you need more information, please go through with this document. And here there is a way or there is a command how we can create archetype through the command line. I'm just going to pass this one until we are working with Maven on Linux systems. There we are going to execute it. But go back and here we are going to select Maven. Okay, Maven archetype and quick start. Here I am selecting the Maven Archetype Quick Start Artifact ID and group ID is arg.apache.maven archetypes and version is 1.4. At the time of recording this video, the version of the archetype is 1.4. Click next. 
In this wizard, we need to provide Maven coordinates. So here we should provide group ID, artifact ID and version. Before providing this information, we need to see how others are using. That we are going to discuss in our next lecture. Thanks for watching and see you there. We are still in the process of creating our first Maven project. Here it is asking for some information that is group ID, artifact ID, version and package. This information we call it as a Maven coordinates. Let's see what Maven coordinates and how to use this information or how to provide this information. I just searched for Maven coordinates. The first link is talking about form references. Still we haven't discussed about form.xml file but let's go and see what Maven coordinates information is provided over here. And if you see Maven coordinates and if I click over here, just ignore about the palm for now, but we can see what is group ID. They are talking about group ID helps us to differentiate your project from the other projects. Okay, that is this is generally unique among guest and organization or a project. It will be different. Usually group ID is provided the company URL in the reverse format. So here you can see here arg.apache.maven which means that the reverse of the URL of this one. Okay, that is how usually we give the group ID. But it is not mandatory that we should provide our group ID like this. It can be without the URL of the company. Still, that can be possible. Next one is artifact ID. Artifact ID is like a name of your package. Once we have generated the artifact out of our code, then what is the name we should give? That is artifact ID. Artifact ID should be unique in your project. Okay, you should not use the same artifact ID. But group ID can be same in the all the projects which are developed by the same organization. Next version, whenever we are updating our code, keep on changing the versions, right? Whenever we release a new features, then we are going to use the latest version. So that is how the group ID, artifact ID and version works. And packaging is, so packaging nothing but it is usually structured like group ID colon artifact ID and version. It, by default, it takes like that. So that is how we can define. So even if we go back to our Eclipse, here we need to provide our company name in the reverse format. I mean to say company website in the reverse format. I am treating my company website name is democompany.com. That's the reason I have given this in the reverse format. That is com.democompany. Next artifact ID, I am going to give the demo project. Okay, we can name it as a anything or else first demo project. Okay, so this should be unique. In case if somebody is already used demo company and if they are using this name, I cannot able to create it. So it should be unique. That's the reason I'm using first demo project. Next thing is version. Usually version you can see without snapshot. Okay. But if we are using snapshot means it is not tested completely or it is not production ready application. So that is the indication it is going to give if we add the snapshot. If you don't need, you can delete it. So you can able to use without snapshot, which means that it is like a production ready. But in our case, I'm not deleting, let it be the uh, snapshot version. Now, if you see the package name, by default, it is taken as a com.democompany.firstdemo and we can give the version as well at the end of this project. But let it be the group ID and artifact ID for now. So this is how we can provide the Maven coordinates information. And before moving to the next step, I'm going to show you some of the companies or organizations how they are using. I just searched for Maven repo for Spring Boot and if you see Maven repositories and if I click on this and here these all are the packages or applications which are developed by Spring Boot organization and they have given for these applications, uh, they have given a group ID called Spring Framework Boot. and. Uh, if I take any application or package in this one, they will have the group ID as a common. Now let's go, go with the Spring Boot starter test. I'm just going inside. This particular application or package having the multiple versions because they will be keep on introducing the new features. So let's go with the latest version which, which released on February 2021. And if I click on this one, you can see here there is a code. You can see Maven tab. 
and there is a code how you can use this particular package or application in your application. So we need to take the group ID, artifact ID and version by using this information we can call this packages or applications in our project. Okay. And if you observe the group ID you can see here that is org. Spring framework dot boot. Okay, this could be the URL of the company they have given in the reverse format and artifact ID they have named it as a Spring Boot Starter Test. Okay, same artifact ID they have given and version this is the version. Okay, that is how they are going to provide and this group ID could be common for other packages as well. There is no change, but the artifact ID keep on changing. Now, if I go with the another package. And here Spring Boot Configuration Processor or Spring Boot Auto Configure. And here also there is a version called 2.4.3. And here also group ID is same and version ID they have released all together. They could be and uh, artifact ID has been changed. So if we wish to use this one, we need to use this information. We are going to talk about this code whenever we are discussing about palm.xml. Now go back over here. That is how we have provided even if I go back and while selecting other other application or other artifacts in my application you can see here this is the arc.apache.maven.archetype this is the group id they have given artifact id and version. So this, with this information I could able to select it because it is a eclipse it automatically propagate if you are using like a Linux or if you want to update on your own you should provide this information manually. Okay, that we are going to talk about in the later sessions for now. Anyway, we have selected this one. Go to the next. We have provided our Maven coordinates or group ID, artifact ID and version and let's finish to create the project. This is how we can create a Maven project on Eclipse or a developer can create a project. That's all for this lecture. In next lecture, we are going to see the directory structure, how it get created whenever we create a project by default. Thanks for watching and see you there. So far we have created our first demo project. If I go and explore what is the content is there inside this project, you can see one SRC main Java, SRC test Java, JRE system library, Maven dependencies, SRC target palm.xml. Among this we need to more concentrate on these two that is SRC main Java, SRC test Java, next palm.xml these three and the target usually should not get created at the time of creating our project but we are using eclipse by default even this folder got created okay just ignore this one for time being if we talk about src main java this is the actual application code we need to write it anyway we have used the default template that is the reason we get a defined project okay there is a package called com.demo company first demo project and uh, there is a application called app.java this has been by default it came and if i double click on this one the file get opened over here this is the content of this file and it is just like a printing hello world okay so that is about the application what we have created at this moment similar way src test java it contains the test cases so whatever application we are writing if we would like to test that application is working fine or not then we should create the test cases as well right so even this is a default application so we got some default test cases that is app test dot java okay this is the test case which we have got it all right next one is palm dot xml nothing but project object model which tells about that what are the dependencies to run this project and also what is the outcome of the project and what is the name of the project and version all this information is stored over here we have given our maven coordinates right like group id artifact id and version that information gets stored under palm.xml you can see here this is the group id of this project and the artifact id as well as the version id okay apart from this it has some other information which we are going to discuss in the later point of time but this is how the directory structure get created whenever we use the default archetype template but usually developers write all this application by creating the empty directory structure we are not developers we are just understanding how developers are working with the application that is the reason i just gone through with the archetype which will create a sample project 
that's all for this lecture in next lecture we are going to see how to build this project thanks for watching and see you there so far we have created our first maven project and we understood the how the directory structure has been created now it's time to build our application before building this application let's understand that what are the steps are involved in the build process and if you see our application is app.java and app test.java is the test case name usually in the real time project there will be more .java extension files as well as the test cases now to build any application the first step we need to compile the source code compiling source code nothing but in our case app.java file is there that we need to convert into the app.class similar way we have app test.java that is also we should convert into the app test.class so this is how we need to compile the source code once compilation is done we need to run the test cases because we have created a test cases over here right in our case app test.class is the test case which we created we need to run those test cases on application that is app class once we run the test cases we need to create the package out of it that could be a jar file er file or var file it could be anything once we have created a package even by using maven we can able to deploy this application on the target system even though it is not a primary responsibility we can still do that one once again the process involved is we are going to compile our source code like a application as well as the test cases once this is done we need to run our test cases on our code if it is fine then we are going to create a jar or ar files these are the steps involved to build our application now let's go back to our eclipse now i want to build this application so to build this application is quite simple that is select your project go to right click and run okay while running it is going to ask you that what do you want me to do it is a maven project so we need to choose the maven so maven build is in case if you have already run the maven build you can go with this one but if you want to change your goals you can choose this option either way is fine for us because we haven't run any commands or we haven't built this application so far so let's select the maven build and here it is asking for the goals now let's see what is goals in our next lecture thanks for watching and see you there we are yet to build our first maven project for that we need maven goals but we don't know what and all goals are there we can go and check it out what and all goals are there but usually maven goals are defined in the build life cycle format if i go and search for maven build life cycle you can see the first link is talking about the introduction to the build life cycle maven goals are set in the build life cycle format so we need to choose the right goals to build our project if you want to understand the build life cycle it's just like a, our goals are divided into the three different build life cycles one is default another one is clean and another one is site so there are three built in build life cycles the default clean and site some of the important goals are displayed over here and if you want to see what are the goals are available in the each build life cycle or each phase you can click on this life cycle reference let me open in the new window and if you go here you can see life cycle references this is the clean life cycle this is the default life cycle and another one is site life cycle okay i'm just going to discuss about some of the important or quite commonly used goals among these life cycles let's go and have a look of those so these are the quite commonly are important goals which we use in the maven that is clean okay this is the goal which helps us to remove all the files generated by the previous build let's assume that we are building the same code again and again in case if we want to delete all the files which are generated by the previous build then we need to use the clean goal next validate validate the project is correct and all necessary information is available it's something like that before building or before compiling it whether it contains the all the information or not it is going to display over here next compile we are going to compile the source code it is going to compile only source code not the test code to compile the test code we have the test compile so in case if we want to compile the test code we need to use this goal next test to test the source code whatever test cases we have written for this application those are tested in the test phase or test goal next one is package it takes the compiled code and package it into its distributed formats such as jar 
So it takes the code and it is going to package it. Next verify, run any checks to verify the package is valid and meets the quality criteria. Whatever package we generated over here, it is going to verify that one. Next install, install the package into the local repository. We talk about local repository when we are working with Maven on Linux system. But for now, just think that it is going to store this output or jar file in some local repository and uh, for use as a dependency in the other projects locally. In our local system, if we are creating any new project there, if we want to use the current project, then it will be useful. Next deploy copies the final package to the remote repository for sharing with the other projects or other developers. Okay, so remote repository and local repository, anyway, we are going to discuss over there. It is nothing but a centralized repository where we can store our files so that other projects or other people want to use it, they can use it. Even we have taken this archetype, right? That is from the central repository. So somebody has created, we are just using it. That's how Maven Goals helps us. Next thing is Maven goals are executed in the sequential format, which means that in a life cycle, if we have the multiple goals, if we are going with the higher level of goal, then previous goals are automatically executed. Getting confused? Let me go back to the page again. So here if you see clean life cycle, right? If I use the clean option, then the previous goals, whatever is there in this phase, get automatically executed, which means that pre-clean is automatically executed, then it will go to the clean. If I want to execute the complete clean life cycle, then I can use the post clean as well. Okay. Similar way, default life cycle. In default life cycle, if I execute this one, it is going to execute only validate. If I execute the compile, all the previous goals, whatever is there, validate, initialize and remaining, all the goals are executed till compile goal. And uh, if I want to execute all the goals within this phase, that is default phase, then I can execute just a deploy. Okay. In this, if I use the clean and in this, if I use the deploy, it means that I'm using the these two goals as well as all these goals. Okay, that is how it works. Next, the site life cycle. Usually we don't use this one. This is for the documentation purpose. In case if we want to create some documentation about our project, we use the site life cycle. Okay, this is not widely used. So we just ignore it. We are going to deal with these two phases. Under these two phases, in clean phase again, we are going to use the just clean options. Then here we are going to use different ways like in case if we want to just compile the code, we can use the compile. In case if we want to test the compile, then all these goals are executed. Nothing but compilation of the source code also get executed. Compilation of the test code also get executed. If I use the clean package, it compiles it and it creates the package. If I use install, it is going to compile it. It will do the testing and it will do the packaging and it also install it in our local repository. That's how it works. Anyway, we are going to see these important goals by executing on our project. That's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. We have discussed some of the important goals which needed to execute our Maven project, right? Now it's time to build our application. Let's go and see what and all goals we can execute as part of this. Okay. So clean life cycle, so far we haven't run this application, so there is no point of executing the clean. Let it be. Next thing is in default phase, we can execute any of these goals. We can go with the compile, nothing but we are compiling the code or else even we can go with the validate. Let's go with the validate and we'll see what does it do. So I'm just copying this goal to avoid the typo validate and run it. Whenever we are running, what does it do? It is going to create the console file and you can see the it has been executed and build is successful. It just scan and uh, this is the project it is going to scan and it has the all the information, nothing but this is the package name and we are going to create a jar out of it. Okay, how does it identify? We are going to talk about that in a while and there is some warning we can just ignore because it could be due to version or I have installed on my laptop. Okay, which means that validate phase is successfully completed or it's fine to execute our application. Now let's run this project again. This time we are going to compile it. So run as and uh, if I choose this option again, it is going to execute the previous goal. I don't want to execute the same goal again. I want to change my goal. In that case, you can go with the Maven build in three dots. Now let's execute the goal with the compile before executing with the compilation. Let's go to our directory where we have created this project and we'll see what changes we can observe over there. So I'm just going to open this that is uh, Velaxi user. 
so this is the directory i'm just going to minimize it so you can see here this is the first demo project and if i open here this is the content what is there over here and there is a target directory this is where all our class or test cases compiled one nothing but what is the outcome of our app.java or app test.java is stored over here okay anyway by default what happens in the eclipse it is automatically compile the code and it stores the information that is the reason you can see the app test.class file is there already okay but usually it should not be there okay this target directory get updated only once we compile the code okay so now what i will do i am going to compile this code and we can see the this date get updated okay let me open it again and let me show you the date and the time so it is showing it as a 85 and it should get updated once we compile our code so let's go back to our goals again so this time i am taking the compile goal and go back to our eclipse and give the compile goal and run it and this time the compilation should be successful you can see here it's just successfully completed and if i go to target directory i could able to see the content but anyway i can go to the explorer and you can see this time target directory have all the data okay these classes are uh, updated i hope i will go inside to the class file you can see nine o'clock it has been updated that is the current time and if i go back to again my target directory apart from this few other directories also got created even test cases also got created this is how we can compile the content now again we are going to use the one more goal that is test compile so now we are going to execute the test compile so test compile is i'm just copying this one and go back to our eclipse and go to project run and maven goals and this time i am going to do the test compile whenever i do test compile it going to validate it compile it and test it nothing but previous all goals should get executed okay let's run this one and if you see this is build is successful you can see default test compile is done and if i go up i could able to see the compilation as well default resource yeah default compile so it compiled our code as well as it is also compiled our test compile okay both has done now let's see the another goal that is we are going to test our code whenever we do the test it should compile the source code as well as the test cases then it do the test now again i am going back to our eclipse right click on the project and go to maven build and i am going with the test okay i am going with the test so we are testing the code and while testing it it should do the compilation of the source code as well as the test cases then it will do the testing so you can see here test it is doing the testing these are the test cases we have only one test case and that is successful that is the reason build is successful and if i scroll down you can see the default test compile it compiled the test cases as well as the source code as well okay so this is how it do and this is the build is successful and uh, total time how much time it took and uh, when it got finished all this information is displayed over here next we are going to execute the package goal and this time whenever we are doing we are going to use the clean life cycle as well why because we have the information which is stored in the previous builds and all this information keep on updating but i don't want to do sometimes what happen if we don't use the clean it is not going to take the latest code why because it thinks that okay i have the same files existing and it start compiling it so it's the best practice to use the clean then your default goal so i'm going to use the clean this time along with our package run as maven build clean along with our package goal okay so now what happens it is going to clean the previous build files and it creates the new files okay so if i go up you can see the goals whatever is executed earlier there was no execution of default clean but this time clean goal has been executed then compile test resources and test compile and test is successful then so it is doing the packaging and you can see here it created a building a jar file and the jar file is stored over here okay the, in this location the jar file has been stored but so far it couldn't able to create the jar file because we haven't used the package goal now we have used the package goal that is the reason it created the package out of it and you can see the package location that is target 
okay in the target directory it's created and if i go here and go to targets and you can see here it created the first demo project hyphen version of the package and this is the artifact id right so artifact id is used to while creating the outcome of our build okay so now package we have executed at last we can execute the install and deploy but now it doesn't make sense until we discuss about the local and remote repository we are going to execute this on the linux system at the time we can see okay so that's how we can use the goals while building our maven code that's all for this lecture see you in the next lecture in previous lecture we have seen different maven goals and how does it helps us to build the project in this lecture we are going to talk about form.xml let's see what maven is saying about form.xml i just searched for what is form.xml let's go to maven.apache.org and if you see the definition what is form.xml a project object model or form the full form of form is project object model is the fundamental unit of work in maven it is an xml file that contains information about the project and configuration details used by maven to build the project it contains the default value of most projects which means that it is telling about the information what this project does do and what is the artifact id and version and also configuration some of the configurations which you need to do to execute this project then it also contains some default values which are required to run that project that is how this palm.xml helps us to build our project let's go to palm.xml and try to understand what is the information it contains at this moment this palm.xml we haven't written whenever we are creating our project by default it got generated and this content also came along with that one if you remember while creating our project we have provided this group id artifact id and version id right so that is the information got updated over here apart from this there is a one more field we required that is packaging but if you don't specify any packaging parameter then it treat it as a jar and that information also updated over here yes you can see here default life cycle jar packaging which means that in case if we don't specify anything it is going to treat it as a jar file next name of the project that is first demo project that is the name we have given and properties what is the compiler we should use to build this project that is 1.7 maven compiler it is using and another important field is dependencies so in the dependencies we need to specify what and all packages does it require to build this project in this case we are calling j unit packages with the group id artifact id and version whenever we mention these as a dependencies it will come and update in the maven dependencies apart from j unit you can see one more dependency which we will talk in the next lecture but for now the j unit packages has been downloaded over here let's assume that if i remove this dependency okay i'm just deleting the entire dependency and uh, let me save this file okay i just deleted the dependency and saved this file and you can see the dependency i mean to say maven dependency tab got disappeared why means we haven't mentioned any dependencies in the palm.xml that's the reason it is disappeared let me add it back and uh, if i go and refresh it sorry i need to save this file and uh, we could able to see the maven dependencies back again because it, which is required to test more efficiently what i am going to do let's assume that we are calling spring boot dependencies let's assume that it requires some spring boot packages to run this application if that is the case we can add those as a dependencies let's call those i am searching as a maven repo for spring boot and uh, if i click on this one okay spring boot starter test let me take this one and 2.4.3 and here you can see the code which they have specified over here is to update in the palm.xml let me copy this snippet and will update as a dependency okay so i have updated it as a dependency and save the file whenever we save it creates or pull the packages which are there in this dependency and store in the maven dependencies it may take a while and let me refresh it now you can see because of adding this one it has been downloaded lot of dependencies which is required but we just mentioned 
Spring Boot Starter dot test, right? That is Spring Boot Starter dot test 2.4.3. But you can see lot of dependencies also get added without specifying under dependency tab that we are going to discuss in the next section. So let me delete it again from here to here and let me save the file and whatever extra packages we got it should be disappeared. So that is how dependency will help us. That's all for this lecture. In next lecture we are going to see what is transitive dependencies. Thanks for watching. See you there. In previous lecture we have seen how the pom.xml does work. In this lecture we are going to see what is the transitive dependency. If you see over here we just added only junit dependency but you can see one more extra came as a dependency. Okay, I missed to remove this one. Anyway, it is commented it out. That's the reason it is not throwing any error. That's okay. And uh, let me save it. All right. So here we are using the junit. Apart from this, this is also taking this package. This package we call it as a transitive dependency. Nothing but to make use of this one, it is mandatory. Without this, you cannot able to use that one. And the same thing you can see over here, dependency hierarchy. If you click on this one, you can see here junit. Junit also brings this package. Okay, even though we don't specified in our pom.xml. Similar way, if I go to my dependency tab and if I add the code which we have added previously, you can see here this is the code, right? Actually, it should add only one package, but in the backend, it is adding so many files. Let me save this file. And you can see lot of files has been added apart from the what we have requested. These all files we call it as a transitive dependency apart from the one which we have mentioned over here. And same you can find in the dependency hierarchy. You can see here we called this one but it internally calls lot of packages which are there. Okay, that is how transitive dependency does work. The transitive dependencies comes with the dependency jar which we mentioned in the palm.xml. All right. Now, anyway, we are not using this one. Let me remove it. Once we have removed, again, it is going to disappear. Once we save the file, I can even use Control S, but uh, just for visibility, I'm using File Save. Okay. That's all for this lecture, and see you in the next lecture. Hello, folks. Welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about what is local repository and remote repository. We were talking about this one when we were talking about Maven goals, right? That is, I will show you over here. Yep. Whenever we execute install, install the packages onto the local repository for use as a dependency in the other projects locally. Which means that there is a local repository in our system. So far, we haven't discussed about it. Let's go and see. Whenever we run our Maven project first time, it is going to create a local repository. By default, the local repository get created under the user's home directory with the .m2. User's home directory, nothing but in my case, I am using a user called Velaxi. Under that .m2 directory, it got created. Even I can go to this directory through the file explorer. If I go here, again I am going back to the projects and user, under user home directory, there is a directory called m2 if i go inside there is a repository and whenever we run any commands it requires any dependencies it pull from the internet and stores in the local repository nothing but this we call it as a local repository it will get updated whenever we are changing the packages which we need to run our project and this information again gathered from the palm.xml now let me show you how does it work Let's assume that we have three developers and they are working on a project. Whenever they are working on the project, they might be using Eclipse and start building the projects. Whenever they build the project first time, it is going to create the .m2 directory in the locally and it pulls the required packages which are needed by that application from the remote repository that is Maven central repository we called. I will show you Maven central repository URL. From there, it is going to pull the required packages, not all the packages, only required packages it pulls and stores in the local repository. That is the reason whenever we build any application first time, it may take a while. Why? Because it pulls the required packages from the Maven central repository and keep it in the local system. But subsequent times it doesn't go to the central repository because packages are available in the local repository, the execution will be quicker. 
in some organizations they will use a one more repository called enterprise repository which will be internal for the company whenever we create new projects or libraries those libraries we can push it into the enterprise repository so if we want to keep our files in the only .m2 directory then we can use the install so maven goals helps us to keep the packages or libraries which we have created under local repository or else in the enterprise repository this is the central repository for all your employees and usually companies use this one because to avoid the security incidents why because getting the packages from the enterprise repository rather than the central repository will be more secure that's how the repositories does work now let's go back and run a maven goal to add our packages to the local repository and we'll see how does it work so we should use install goal it is going to add our packages to the local repository right if i go to file explorer so this is the m2.repository right here you can see com i think it is already added to this repository let me go inside your yeah, demo project and uh, first maven project yep this is the one right and snapshot you can see our packages is already added why because it is a eclipse by default it might be taking whenever we do some changes anyway if you want to get it done we need to go to the maven project in our eclipse and go to right click run maven build here i am going to give clean nothing but in case any files are generated by the previous build clean those files let me execute only clean and we'll see what happens i'm just executing the clean goal okay it has been executed successfully and if i am correct we could not able to see the target directory in our project let me go back so i am going back to my user under user we have projects right so projects and the first demo project and you can see there is no target directory over here here it is showing because it is not updated but anyway if i refresh again it get created uh, whenever we refresh it build the project that's the behavior of the eclipse but anyway we cannot able to see the target directory because we have just cleaned again i'm executing my maven goal on my project that is run as maven build clean install okay whenever i do install it automatically runs all these goals whatever goals are there in the default life cycle prior to the install everything it is going to execute so let's execute it i'm just running okay build is successful if i go up you can see here it is executing all goals default clean default resources and default compile default test resource like that and testing also it has done once the testing is done it's created a jar file you can see here this is the jar file it created default install it should install in the local repository right so installing this one it is taking the jar file from this location and uh, it is adding to c drive users velaxi.m2 repository okay in this location it is adding all right so that is what it is going to do the install that's all for this lecture hopefully you got enough idea how it works on the eclipse in next section we are going to see how to work with maven on linux system there we discuss some of the concepts which we haven't covered over here thanks for watching and see you there now it's time to execute the deploy goal but we don't have any central repository so even though we try to execute the deploy goal it doesn't work so if you go and see the what is deploy deploy is nothing but to copy our final packages onto the remote repository so we don't have any remote repository but at this moment we are getting all packages from the maven central repository that we can check it out by using maven repository url if you give you can see here maven repository repo central and if you go here there is a url that is repo1.maven.org if you click on this it will list out the all the repositories i mean to say all the packages or libraries which we can get it from the maven so even we were doing the j unit right so if i search for j unit you can see j unit is there and uh, again if i go to j unit there are versions we are using 4.11 even apart from 4.11 we can use the some other versions as well i can still use 3.8 uh, let me try to use the 3.8 and we'll see what happens 
so it is not responding let me close it and reopen it quickly we are just trying to reopen it it is taking the default workspace location and launch it okay now what we are doing is we are going to update our configuration that is form.xml in form.xml we are going to use junit instead of 4.11 i am going to use the 3.8 so even though the dependencies also get changed to the 3.8 instead of 4.11 let me save this file and if i refresh yep you can see here junit 3.8 but this time there is no dependency with the other packages so if i go to dependency hierarchy junit alone can get downloaded and stores in the maven repository that is how we can pull it so in case if we try to access the package which is not there in the remote repository let's take an example that i'm again i'm going to the palm.xml assume that 8 dot sorry 3 dot 8 2 which doesn't exist at all so let me save this file and you can see here error message okay problems i think errors if you see the errors it will tell you that missing artifact junit why because if you go and check in your central repository there is no such kind of package we have 3.8.2 but not 3.8.2 okay if that package is there in the central repository then only we can able to use it so the packages must be available in the central repository in case if you have your own remote repository and uh, if there is such kind of version maybe then you will get it but most of the cases, these kind of libraries or files, we are going to pull it from the Maven central repository. So you should make sure that the existing repositories or libraries should be there. Okay. Now again, I have changed it to 8.2 and I think it should be get updated. Updated. And uh, anyway, I'm keeping it back to the our original one. File. Save. That's it. Okay, so this is how we can work with the repositories on our local system. That's all for this lecture. See you in the next lecture. So far, we have created a first Maven project and it is working fine. Let's assume that I'm a developer and I would like to give this code to the DevOps engineer. Now, it's time to push this code into the source code management or version control system. So that if there is any changes I do for this code, it should not affect the working code as well as I can share this one to the my DevOps engineer so that he can able to deploy into the target environment. But I don't need to give all these dependency packages or some libraries which is required to build this project. Why? Because that is already explained in my palm.xml and I will give the source code and the unit test cases. So if I give these three, that would be sufficient for him to test or build the code again in his own environment. So to do this one, we need to push this code into the version control system. In our case, we are going to push it into the GitHub. Now I am going to create a repository in the GitHub and we will push this code onto remote repository. From there, I will act as a DevOps engineer. For that, let's jump into our GitHub account. This is my GitHub account. I'm going to create a new repository and repository name. I'm giving it as a package name. That is, so I'm giving first demo project. Okay. Same name as our package name I'm giving and we can make it as a private in case if it is having a proprietary data or confidential project. In our case, we don't have such kind of data. So we'll go with the public so that we can easily manage it. But usually we don't create public repositories in the organizations until unless there is no such valuable content. Most of the cases we go with the private repositories and I'm not creating any files. We may need the dot ignore file. I will tell you let's create without doing anything. So now we have created a repository here. We have options in case we have created repository and we want to add few files. And so far we haven't created any files. We can follow these steps. But we have already created a project and we want to push that code over here. In that case, we need to do this one. Okay. But before doing this one, we need to convert our project folder as a Git repository. So that will become a local repository and this will become a remote repository. We can able to establish connection between these two. If you are not able to understand what I am talking, maybe it's time for you to go with some of the Git courses. If you wish, I have a separate course on Git that is Git and GitHub for DevOps engineers. It will be definitely add value for your DevOps journey. Maybe you can check out that. So I'm opening my Java application folder. 
so this is where we are storing our application right that is under Velaxi projects first demo project now we would like to convert this one into the local repository and this is remote repository and this command helps us to enable connection between the local to remote for that we just need to right click over here and you can see a option called git bash here just click on this one if you are not getting that option maybe you haven't installed git bash if you don't know how to do that one i have added a separate lecture for that one at the end of this course maybe you can refer to that i am just increasing the font size and uh, we need to convert this one into a local repository first for that git init dot okay so even this command also works when you install the git bash otherwise it doesn't work now it has been converted into the git repository that's the reason earlier there is no master over here now you can see the master at the end of this repository anyway if i do ls you can see the list of the files whatever you could able to see without dots if you want to see the files which are with dots then you need to do ls minus la so a helps us to display the hidden files so dot git directory has been created just now and even settings file projects file everything is there all right so let's clear it and ls now what i am going to do is i want to extract a target directory why because as a devops engineer he just need the source code like which is containing the application logic as well as test cases and pom.xml which have the all the information to build this application so target is containing the code which is comes out of the build process right that is the reason you can see the class files and uh, jar files all this stuff okay these all are not needed while pushing your code for that we are going to use a file called git ignore okay va dot git ignore this file helps us to exclude some of the unnecessary folders which we don't want to push it into the remote repository in this case we don't want to push the target directory right so let's open and target slash star which means that the data which contains in the target directory everything should be ignored so all right let's save this file now it's time for us to push this code onto the remote repository before that if i check git status now you can see it is pulling or pushing the code only dot git ignore apart from dot ignore we don't need all this stuff so i am going to edit my dot git ignore file again so i will add those as well dot class path dot settings okay these all are files i will just have a look over here okay i have added everything now if i do git status okay you can see only dot git ignore file pom.xml and src only this information we are going to adding to our local repository so to add it to the local repository git add dot it is going to add the content into the local repository and git commit minus m added initial commit it is asking for me to add username and password i will quickly add it git user add okay i am adding the username similar way sorry that is email id i am going to add the username all right now i can able to commit the changes into the local repository so this is going to commit into the local repository again if i check for git status okay nothing is there in the local repository now it's time to add our remote repository okay so to add remote repository this is the command so i'm just adding this command to our repository so our local repository get associated with the remote repository now we are going to push our code onto remote repository git push minus u origin main or master because by default on the remote repository it creates the main so i am going to use the master even we can use the main branch so it is going to push our code onto remote repository and it will ask for the credentials we should provide those sorry i just cancelled it again i am going to execute it it should ask for the credentials okay here you can see i am going to use the sign in with the browser i have credentials usually it should prompt over here itself anyway i am going to use travd and password it will store the credentials in the credential format authorize the 
git and uh, it should be able to push the code over there right so i have successfully pushed my code into the remote repository and if i refresh here you can see here there is a branch called master i have successfully able to push the content that is src and pom.xml these two files are sufficient to build the code now i can say that as a developer i have pushed my code and uh, now devops engineer is going to use this code again he will use the maven in his environment to build this code how does it happen we are going to see in the next section thanks for watching and see you there until previous section we were working with the maven with integration of eclipse we haven't dedicatedly installed maven but whenever we install eclipse maven comes along with that one and also we covered most of the concepts as a developer point of view now it's time to understand how does it work as a devops engineer perspective that is where i'm going to take a linux system and will create a build system by installing maven on that one and we are going to execute most of the activities what we have done on our eclipse along with that we will see some of the additional concepts which a devops engineer should know for that of course we need a linux system so in this case i am going to use my aws as cloud provider where i am going to create a linux system in your case you can use any cloud provider of course we just need a linux system even it could be your vm but i don't want to make it as a system dependency that is the reason i am taking a cloud system so that everybody can able to follow it easily if you are new to the aws then don't worry i am going to add a separate lecture how to create an aws account after that you can directly come over here and start creating an instance anyway i'm going to show you how to create an aws account so that you can follow along with me i have already few systems that is jenkins tomcat and some kubernetes system but uh, for time being just ignore these systems i'm going to launch a new instance where we are going to install maven let's go and launch a new instance from here maybe i will go back to console this is how it looks like once you have created your aws account newly then you can go to ec2 service which is under compute either here or here let me go here and the running instances there is zero running instances but instances total three i have at this moment anyway go to running instances i have three instances which are in stopped state that's the reason it is not showing under running let me launch a new instance here i am going with the amazon to linux you can go with any amazon linux there is no problem even you can go with the red hat sushi linux or ubuntu but whenever we deal with these operating systems the command may not work so if you are new to the linux maybe you can strict with the amazon linux or else you can strict to follow what operating systems i use throughout these lectures let's go and select this one and this is the instance type which we are going to use free tier eligible maybe you can find out the additional information about the free tier eligibility in aws page here we are not changing anything let it be with the default settings here as well and the tags we are going to add it name of the server i am going to give it as a maven build server okay this is the instance tag we are giving security group we are going to create a new security group for that i am changing it as a maven sg same thing in the description as well next and launch while launching we need to download a key pair because that is useful to connect to our system so i am going to create a new key pair so this is the option it will get propagated if you are launching it first time and i am going to name it as a maven key and to download the key pair we have downloaded it and launch instance that's it we have created a new ec2 instance i mean to say linux ec2 instance where we are going to install maven that's all for this lecture in next lecture i'm going to show you how can you able to install maven thanks for watching see you there hello folks welcome back now our maven system is up and running let's connect to this system to connect to this system we need a tool called mobile xterm or putty and according to your convenient you can use anything in my case i'm going to use the mobile xterm for that we should take the public ip so this is the public ip you can just need to copy it sorry by mistakenly i have copied private but this is the public ip so i have taken public ip go to your mobile xterm 
So you need to download and install the mobile extern or else putty also you can use. So go to sessions. I'm giving the IP address and go to advanced SSH settings. Here you should use private key and you need to go to the path where your Maven key is downloaded. Let me open this one. Okay, so here we have the key. This is the path where we have kept our key. Go to this location and load the key path location like uh, quick access downloads maven and uh, your key pair that's it and default username is ec2 minus user all right we are connecting to our maven system let me see the security group maybe security group could be the issue so go to security group okay it looks good for me yeah we have connected to the system okay nothing to change just it took little bit of time and uh, become a root user to become a root user use the sudo su minus this is the command and clear the screen now it's time to set up maven for that one we need to go to the apache official website and download the packages let's do that so i'm just opening the new tab if you search for download maven then you can see maven download apache maven from where we can download apache maven and if you open the link you can see system requirements what is the minimum requirement of your system so we should have the JDK installed. That is one thing we need to make sure. And there is no memory requirement. And the disk space is approximately 10 MB is fine. And even operating system, there is no minimum requirement. Next thing, these are the links how you can download your Maven. So we are going to use the tire.gz archive. This is the one we are going to use. So you just need to right click and copy link address to download it. Before doing that one, Anyway, we have connected to our system, right? Let's install Java first. For that one, just go here and Java, since it got disconnected, let me open the new tab. Okay, again, same thing we need to do sudo su minus and increase the font size, not this much. And I'm closing the previous session. And here, clear the screen. I'm going to check whether Java is there or not. Java minus v. There is no Java installed. So let's install Java. M install Java minus 1.8 star. Okay. This is to install the latest version, which means that the packages which starts with Java minus 1.8 install those packages. Yes to install. It may take a while. Let's wait until it gets complete. Great. Java installation is completed. Just check for Java minus version. Okay. Here we can see Java 1.8. Now we need to set up Java home path. For that we need to update our dot profile and we should add the Java home path. How can I check the Java home path? It is quite simple. Here we are going to execute this command. I am going to add this command in the documentation anyway. This means that the file which starts with Java minus 1.8 after that it could be anything. So in this directory wherever it finds display those and we are displaying only top three. That's it. So among this this is the one. We need to set up the Java home path for that one. Just we need to edit VA tilde slash bash underscore profile. So we are going to update the bash profile of the root user. And the next thing we need to add Java underscore home is equal to path of the JDK. That's it. Once you have done this, you need to add this one to your path dollar Java underscore home. Okay, so what we are doing is we have installed Java once that is done. We need to set up Java home path. So we have given this is where the JDK is installed. That is what we are telling to our path. All right. Now save this file. And if I do echo dollar path, you cannot able to see the updated path yet. But you can do source of the our bash underscore profile, which means that read the file. And now if I do the echo path, we could able to see the latest path. All right. So which means that our Java installation is successful. In next video, I'm going to show you how to set up Maven. Thanks for watching and see you there. Hello folks. Welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to see how to set up Maven. So far, we have created an EC2 instance on AWS cloud and installed java as i mentioned in the previous lecture we are going to download our maven packages from this location so just right click and copy the link address 
go back to our maven and currently i am under root directory i am going to under slash opt it's a optional directory where we can configure these kind of packages now to download these packages we need to use a command called wget okay if you are not familiar much about the linux commands i have done a dedicated course on linux for cloud and devops engineers maybe you can have a look so wget is the command and we just copying the link which we have copied and download it it takes a while yes we have downloaded and you can see this is the package we just downloaded once we have downloaded we need to extract it for that tar minus xvzf this is the command we should use and file name which we have downloaded it has been extracted and if i go here and uh, go inside to apache maven 3.6.3 .3, okay these all are the files now how we have set up the home path for our jenkins similar way we need to set up path for maven as well so for that i'm just copying the path of our maven even we can rename this directory if, if you need some easy name now we need to set up our maven home path for that we need to edit our bash underscore profile again so tilde slash dot bash underscore profile okay so this is the file and where we have updated our java home similar way i'm going to update maven for maven we need to use m2 underscore home okay this is the command we should use m2 underscore home and the path of the apache maven where we have extracted and also we have one more command that is m2 is equal to slash opt maven slash bin we need to give till bin that's it once this is done again we need to add these two to our path so dollar m2 colon dollar m2 underscore home okay so that's it now i'm going to save this file and again if i execute echo dollar path okay it is not reflected yet if i do source and the file name where we have updated our path variables and if i do again echo dollar path this time we could able to see the maven path as well okay this is how we are going to update it but java path it has been updated twice because we have done the source twice anyway if you log off and log in again it get disappears so to validate whether we have set up our maven path correctly or not we need to use a command called mvn mvn minus minus version this is the command to check out version is there any typo minus minus version yes you can see now our maven home path is slash opt apache maven and it is using the java version this is how we can set up the maven in next lecture we are going to see how we can build our code in the linux operating system by using the commands thanks for watching and see you there hello friends in previous lecture we have seen how to set up maven in this lecture i am going to pull code which we have pushed into the github and we'll start building on Linux system. For that one, I'm just logging into my GitHub repository. This is my GitHub repository. I'm just going inside repositories. First demo project and get the link of this repository. And we need to go onto Linux system. First, let me check whether Git is installed over here or not. If I execute a command called Git, what happened? Let me open new duplicate session, clear the screen and increase the font size yes if i execute git okay it is not installed yet m install git yes to install now git is installed let me clear the screen again now git clone we need to do right git clone the repository name which we would like to copy all right we have downloaded the repository onto our local system now let's go to our repository and uh, ls you can see pom.xml src here we need to execute our maven commands so the first maven command what we are executing is mvn and the goal name what we would like to execute again i am going back to maven goals and we'll see what and all goals we can execute this is maven goals page so here we can execute validate compile test compile test package install and deploy we are not able to do because we should have proper authentication for the remote repository so let's go and first execute the validate and uh, 
you can see this build is successful and if I do ls okay so far there is no target directory has been created usually whenever we were executing on Eclipse we could see the target directory always appears but here you can clearly see the variation until unless we execute at least compile we cannot able to see the target directory now let's execute the compile so mvn is the command to execute the maven commands and compile and we are compiling our code whenever we compile it should create the jar files and observe this it is pulling all the required packages from the remote repository to our local repository okay i mean to say central repository to our local repository it took almost 45 seconds to complete this one and this is the first time we have executed this compile command that's the reason it pulled a lot of packages which are necessary to build this application and it stores in the local repository i will show you the local repository in a while but build is successful and if i do ls again now you can see the target directory over here target directory gets create whenever we do at least a compile command so if i go inside to a target directory and you can see the class files okay so if you do remember we were discussing about this initial step is we need to compile the code so whenever we compile the code java file get converted into the class file right so that is what we are going to see first demo project okay and app.class you can see this one all right and we haven't compiled the test cases yet that's the reason you cannot able to see the test cases information okay now i'm going to compile the test cases so before going to that one cd tilde and first maven project and make sure that you are executing this where you have the pom.xml so if you execute the command from other location it doesn't work let's take that if i go to src and the mvn compile if i do it search for palm.xml and if it couldn't able to find it it throw you the build failure and you can see that the goal you specified required a project to execute but there is no palm.xml in the directory okay so i am going back to again where we have located our palm.xml and this time i am going to execute mvn test compile whenever we execute mvn test compile along with the source code it also compiles the test cases we have one test case in src right okay so it is going to compile that as well and this time it is not going to pull the lot of packages because most of the packages are available so our build also quite quicker why because it is going to pull the required packages from the local repository not from the central repository and we have done the test compile only the packages which are required additionally it is going to pull remaining all it takes from the local repository all right now again if i go to my target i could able to see the test cases yes you can see here if i do the tree on this one tree is a command which will displace the all the content of that particular directory okay let me try it okay tree is not installed let me install and if i do again tree test class and you can see there is a test class com demo company under that app test dot class this is the file has been created all right next thing is we have compiled our source code and test cases now it's time to execute the test cases for that we can use the maven goal that is i'm going back to again our home directory of the remote repository now mvn test okay so it is going to test the our source code and while doing every new goal if it requires the additional packages it is going to pull the all the packages from the central repository okay we have tested we have only one test case so the one test case has been run and it is successful that's the reason build also successful and so far if you observe we haven't created any jar file because we are just doing only the compile and test we have to do the packaging so if i go to goals here we have compiled test compile even test we have ran and package so now we are going to do the package command so mvn package and again if it requires some packages it is going to pull it and it execute the all the phases then it is going to make it as a package by default it is a jar file now it has created a jar file and it stored in this location okay so this is how we can package our code our next goal is install 
So let's execute install. Whenever we do install, it is going to store in our local repository. Before executing install, let's look for the where is our local repository. So I will go back over here and search for find slash minus name dot m2. So dot m2 is the local repository directory. So let's search for and you can see here slash root m2. Under root directory, there is a directory called m2. Why it's created under root? Because I am a root user, as a root user I am doing all this activity, usually that M2 directory gets created under the user who is executing or who is configured it. Usually .m2 directory gets created under the user's home directory. Currently I have logged in as a root user, that's the reason it is created under slash root. Okay, anyway I am going back to my root directory, if I do pwd, you can see root and if I go to dot m2 and if you want to see the hidden files ls minus a and you can see the directory called dot m2 is there if i go inside and if i do ls so repository and if i do tree you can see lot of packages you can see over here okay it has been displayed in the tree format why because multiple directories are there in each directory different different files or libraries are there okay it's too big output but if i do ls again repository is there if i go inside repository and there are multiple again we have different folders we majorly concentrate on com if i go inside com you can see we don't have demo company yet why because we haven't executed install command okay so now again i'm switching back to my root directory okay pwd i'm under root here we have the first demo project if i go inside again i am going to execute mvn install okay whenever we execute mvn install now packages should copied into the com location and you can see a new company called demo company let's execute the mvn install command so we are using the install goal over here all right build is successful and you can see it took only nine seconds why because most of the required packages are already there and if i go from the starting of this build you can see here mvn install whenever i execute it is building the project the project name is com demo company and the first demo project and uh, it is pulling some of the required packages and first it is doing the default resources and the default compile default test resources and default test compile and default test it has done once test is done default packaging is done at last it is doing the default install okay which means that it has copied the packages into the dot m2 directory if you see here installing this is the jar file this jar file copied into slash root m2 and again if i go back to my root directory ls minus la go to dot m2 and if i look for repositories and com here you can see demo company earlier it was not there once you do the install it get copied into this location this is how maven goals works but in this case we are just pulling the code and created or executed maven commands all right so this is how we can take the code of your developer and build it in the build server that's all for this lecture see you in the next one In previous lecture, we have seen different Maven goals to execute or to build our code. In this lecture, I am going to show you what are the quite commonly used Maven goals or Maven commands. That is quite simple. At this moment, we have the target directory. Usually, whenever we are building any new application, we are going to clean the existing repository. That is MVN clean. Whenever we do MVN clean, it is going to clear all the files which created in the previous build. And you can see here what it is doing. It is executing the maven clean goal and it's deleting entire folder of target. Okay. Because this target directory itself created from the previous build. And if I check ls, you can see there is no target directory. Next, we want to execute or build the code. So instead of executing each command like mvn, compile, test, package, install. Okay. Instead of executing all this, if I do only install, that would be more than enough. Why? Because whenever we execute install, it is going to execute all the goals which are prior to install. If you see the default lifecycle, you can see validate, compile, test compile, test, package, verify. 
all are before to install that's the reason if you execute only install that is more than enough and while executing install again we need to clean the previous build that is the reason it's always best practice to use mvn clean install this is the best command we mostly use in case if we would like to take until installing the packages into the local repository if you don't want to install your packages onto local repository maybe clean package is sufficient okay so but in most of the cases we execute clean install so that it will get deployed into the once the build is done it is going to deploy it into the local repository and you can see here this time our goals are quite faster even it's not taken five seconds because most of the required packages are already there in our local repository that is the reason first time whenever you execute any project it will take little bit of time to take the all the required packages from the remote repository once that is done it would be quite faster in the subsequent builds now again if i create a new project and if i execute building of that project if that project required some of the libraries or packages which has been downloaded by this program still it helps because even that also go and check in the local repository with that context, in next video, I am going to create a new project from our Linux command line. There is an option, even we can use the archetype over here as well. I will show you how to use that. Thanks for watching and see you there. In this lecture, we are going to see how can we create a project by using Linux command line. If you remember, we have created our first project on Eclipse by going to the Maven archetype. I will just show you quickly what we have done earlier. It was just file, new, and we went to others and search for Maven project. Next, and we have used default location and click next. Here we can see all the archetypes which are available. Similar way, even we can get these archetypes in our Linux system and we can choose among these. And once you have chosen, of course, we have selected when to next and given the group ID, artifact ID and version ID, right? Same thing, we can do it in our Linux system as well to create a new project by using archetype. So far, we have used a hello world simple Java application which generates the dot jar. But here we are going to use the web app. So for that, you can just search for Maven web app archetype. It lists out the links where we can able to get it. But I am going with the first link where we have the instructions how we can able to do that one. You can see here Maven Archetype Web App is a archetype which generates a sample Maven web project. So we are going to generate a sample Maven web project and this is the directory structure. It is going to create palm.xml and in SRC we will have a index.jsp. This is the actual application location. How can we get it? That is MVN Archetype Generate. So it is saying that, okay, we are generating from the archetype and what is the archetype we are using? Whenever we want to use any archetype, of course, it should contain the group ID, artifact ID and version ID, right? So this information is needed. That is the information we are providing in this command to create it. So archetype we are using, that is group ID is archetypes and artifact ID is Maven archetype web app and version is 1.4. So this is the command we can execute to create a new project. But another way to check out all the artifacts is just executing this Maven archetype generate. It is going to list out all the archetypes, how it is displaying over here. If I go back here, it is displaying all the archetypes, right? Similar way it is going to display. So let me execute that one. I came back to my Maven server, PWD, I'm under root. So far we have first demo project is there. So now I am going to execute Maven Archetype Generate. It is going to display the list of the archetypes which are available. We'll wait for a while. Alright, now you can see total we have 2899 archetypes are available. We can choose any of these. And uh, by default it's selected 1752. But we need a web app. I don't know whether it is a web app application or not. If that is the case, you can just come out from this. I'm just giving control C. I came out from the command. Again, if I execute the same command with grep web app, okay, it displays all the archetypes which contains the word web app. Again, with the web app, there are a lot of archetypes are there. So rather than this one, what I can do, let me give the control C and I'm going to give the full name of our archetype. So this is the archetype ID, right? Maven archetype web app. 
So let me copy this one and execute it. Now it is going to display which matches to this pattern. Okay, now you can see we have got limited outputs that is 1757 is Maven archetype web app which is developed by the org.apache Maven archetypes. So this is the one which we need to choose. Okay, number is 1757. Okay, so let's go back. Control C again. I'm going to execute Maven archetype and this time once it is displayed, I'm going to choose this number. Other way is just directly executing this command. But anyway, instead of executing this command, I'm going with the manual way. Let's go and see what and all information it asks. Okay, so it is 1757. Let's execute. Now you can see it is asking for the version because we have selected the archetype. Okay, whenever we select archetype, it selects the group ID as well as the archetype ID. Now we need to select version that is latest version is 7. Let it be the default or else you can just type 7. It takes the this archetype. Now default value for the property. Now it's time to provide our own group ID. So we have given com.demo company, right? And uh, archetype I am going to use second demo project okay now snapshot let it be the default snapshot and uh, package name yes it will comes as a company name colon artifact id let it be the package name that's it and we would like to create you can see it is just displaying to review your information we have given the com dot demo company artifact id second demo project version id is so and so package name is com dot demo company so just give yes to create this project now you can see it has been successfully imported and if I check LS, now you can see one more project called second demo project. Okay, this is how we can able to create a sample web app application by using the archetype on a Linux system through command line. And one more thing is we can able to get it from this command line as well. Let me try with this one and we'll see what does it do. There is no option to give the project name, but uh, let it be. We'll try. Okay, are we inside the project? No. And we'll see what is the folder it is going to create it or project name it is going to create it. It is asking for the group ID, artifact ID and so on. So if we give according to that, it is going to create it. But anyway, I don't want to create it. So let me give the control C. Clear the screen and LS. That's all for this lecture. In next lecture, we are going to see what is the content on this project. Thanks for watching. See you there. Hello folks, in previous lecture we have created a our second demo project by using the archetype and this project type is web app. Now I am going inside to my project that is second demo project and if I go inside over here you can see palm.xml and src is there. You can just execute tree on this directory and it lists out the what and all content is there. You can see palm.xml is there then there is a src main web app and it doesn't have any test cases it just have the only source code nothing but application logic if we need test cases maybe developers has to write the test cases as a devops engineer we don't write the test cases anyway now i'm just trying to open and understand the what is the content inside the palm.xml so if i open palm.xml it has some of the information so we'll try to understand some of the important parameters in the palm.xml once again quickly. So this is the palm.xml version that is 4.0.0. So model version. Next group ID you can see what is the information we have provided. Artifact ID and version ID. And one extra entry you can see here packaging in our previous palm.xml there is no packaging. If we don't specify any packaging, by default it will treat it as a jar file. But in this case, it comes with the packaging as a where, which means that it is a web application. So this packaging will tell us that what kind of output it is going to generate it. Next thing, name of the project, this is the one. And uh, if we scroll down properties, we are ignoring it. Not much important for us. Let's scroll down a little bit. Here you can see dependencies. We have still have the JUnit entry over here. It comes as a Maven dependency. Then if you see build, build, under build you can see the plugins. Plugins nothing but the goals indirectly, which goals it is going to execute and whenever we execute that goals, what is the libraries are necessary to execute those goals or what is the packages are required. So we are executing clean, right? So whenever we execute clean, this is the package or goal it is going to call internally and similar way resources, compiler 
and whenever we do test cases please remember that it is going to use the surefire plugin okay this is the plugin is useful for the test cases and it is generating the var so this is the required maven var plugin maven install plugin whenever we execute install maven deploy so all the important goals what we specify those goals the plugins are available in the backend those you can see under the build option okay now let's try to build this application so first time we are building this application that's the reason whatever packages it requires it pull from the maven central repository of course it is going to take a bit of time comparatively subsequent builds anyway let me clean the screen ls and uh, let's execute mvn clean install okay so we'll see so let's wait for a while until it gets complete okay most of the files has been pulled that's the reason many goals are completed quickly and it took 12 seconds to complete because all the goals it's have almost everything in the dot m2 local repository and if i execute again the same command you can see uh, not even take 12 seconds this, this time you can see this time it's completed within three seconds okay anyway if we try to understand the output okay it's done the cleaning the existing target file and uh, it's test compiled test and you can see there is no tests clearly it is saying that no tests to run because we haven't written any test cases and it is building a var file and it is deploying the var file sorry not installing a var file on our dot m2 directory okay that's how it works now let me do a small change that if i open my palm.xml and if i remove the dependencies nothing but we are not running any test cases so if i remove the jinit plugin we'll see what will happen okay there is no dependencies for us okay i have removed everything and if i do cat palm.xml you cannot able to see any dependencies let me try to run the same command again that is maven clean install we are trying to build it again okay now also build is successful why because there is no test cases so there is no point of making it as a dependency but whereas if i go to my previous project nothing but in my first project if i go here if i do tree if i go to src we have test cases if i try to delete the same content over here va palm.xml this is on project one okay if we try to delete the dependencies and we'll see what will happen over here okay this is a jar and here if you see there is no packaging option that's the reason it is going to take the default packaging okay so default packaging is jar packaging this is the one it is taking even it is going to take all these backend plugins even though without this content still we can execute okay but it is just to in case if you wish to change the versions we can do that one so let's try to save it and i'm going to execute the mvn clean install okay this time of course it is going to fail because we have test cases but there is no appropriate plugin to run these test cases you can see here build is failed and failed to execute the goal and if you see the goal maven compiler plugin test complete so it could not able to compile the code at all that is the reason we need to add the proper dependencies to run our application so to add it back of course i need to find out the dependency plugins so for that i am going to search for junit repo if i do you can see junit and the latest version is 4.13 actually we were using 4.11 right okay so let me take the latest version and uh, let me add it as in the dependencies so i'm just adding it so va palm.xml and after properties here i'm going to mention that is dependencies we want to do let me copy it okay but it should be inside the dependencies okay and uh, again it should be closed all right so now what we are doing we are using the latest version of junit plugin let me save it and uh, let's execute the same command this time it should be successful if there is no any syntax errors in our palm.xml file of course this time the test is successful and build also successful 
here you can see as I said JUnit is going to use the Surefire plugin in the backend right you can see here Surefire plugin even though we call it as a goal in the backend it is going to call the compiler okay let's do one last thing that is we are going to edit our palm.xml and we'll delete this one okay all these uh, what I can say build plugins these all are optional I said so let me delete it okay I have deleted it and if I do palm.xml it contains only the information of our project as well as the properties and the dependencies there is no default plugins now let's execute the command that is clean install nothing but delete the previous build and create the new one and this time also it should be successful okay I have deleted all these plugins so it might be going to the remote repository to pull the latest one because the palm.xml whatever information it contains could be the older versions all right even though I have deleted our build snippet still the build is successful but this time it pulled a lot of repositories or libraries from the remote repository why because in our palm.xml the plugins which we might use could be the older version this time we didn't mention anything that's the reason it went to the remote repository and pulled the latest versions that is the reason it took little bit of time and if I scroll down if you see the total time it took 41 seconds if I execute the same command again this time it should not download any packages and uh, it could be quite faster it is only three seconds okay and uh, you can see here it is using the surefire plugin of 2.12 and compiler plugin 3.1 and 2.6 Alright, that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Hello folks. In this lecture we are going to talk about settings.xml. Let's try to understand why do we use settings.xml. I just searched for settings.xml in Maven. If I open the first link, if you see the definition of settings.xml, the settings.xml file contains elements used to define values which configure maven executes in various ways like the palm.xml but it should not be bundled to any specific project or distributed to any audience which means that usually palm.xml is associated with a specific project right and that palm.xml if you use for some other project it may or may not work but settings.xml is kind of a global configuration assume that there are some common values you need to provide across your environment then you can update in the settings.xml and this file we can able to configure in two locations that is maven install so where we have installed maven within that there is a file called config under that we can specify the settings.xml let me show you this location Alright, so this is our Maven server. I just renamed hostname as a Maven. So it is easy for us to identify because we are going to use Tomcat in next lecture. That's the reason I have used Maven as a hostname over here. And if I go to slash opt Apache Maven. So here we have a conf and we have a settings.xml file. Okay, this is one location. And if I open this one, I think most of the default values are displayed over here. So a lot of content is commented over here. This is one location and another one is we have .m2 directory, right? So in this case under root root user, we have a .m2 directory. So under .m2 directory here also we can create by default. You cannot see the settings.xml file over here, but we can create it. But recommended way is better to create a settings.xml file under .m2 directory. So this is how you can define the settings.xml and if you would like to change something apart from the default values, maybe you can update the settings.xml. So in our case to test this one, what we are going to do is I am going to use a Tomcat and we'll try to deploy a application from Maven to Tomcat. In that case, we are going to use the settings.xml. I will show you how we are going to do that one. That's all for this lecture. In next lecture, we are going to see how to deploy a application on Tomcat server. Thanks for watching. See you there. In this lecture, I am going to show you how can we deploy a application on Tomcat server using Maven. To demonstrate this, we need a Tomcat server. I have already set up a Tomcat server. I am going to use this one to deploy our application from the Maven server. Already we have Maven server which is up and running. So to install Tomcat server, I have given a procedure over here. So this is to set up Tomcat on a EC2 instance. You just need to follow the same steps because even I have done the same thing to set it up. Once you have set up the Tomcat, you need to provide the credentials to Tomcat users to do the some deployment. 
that is where we are using this deployments okay so we need to update this content in the tomcat users.xml same thing i have done so here we are going to use a user called admin and password as a admin to deploy our application from the maven so this is the major thing just i would like to highlight so I will just log into my Tomcat server and show you that whether it is matching to this configuration or not. For that, I'm going to my Tomcat server and taking the public IP address of this, going to my terminal. I have already logged into my Maven server and go to new session SSH and IP address and I'm loading my key pair. Here I'm using git key as my key pair because I have created this server to prepare my git course. So same thing I'm using and I'm just connecting to this server by using ec2-user. That's it. So it's configured or set up some time back. That is the reason there could be some security patches are there. It is advising me to update. But we can skip that one for time being and let me become your root. Clear the screen and uh, I'm going inside to OPT and I have configured my Tomcat server under this location. Just go here and here. We have the all the configurations and uh, config tomcat users.xml. In this file, I have updated my users information. You can see whatever information you have seen in the browser. I mean to say in this file, same thing is updated over here. I'm going to use this admin user to deploy the application from my tomcat server to over here. Okay. So just to, to differentiate, I'm going to change the host name as a tomcat for this one. Host name tomcat okay to make it effect just you need to do sudy su minus so that the name is going to change it as a tomcat that's okay so we have set up the tomcat server as per the documentation which i just shown you next thing we need to start our tomcat application to start our application we just go to opt and uh, apache tomcat here we have been under bin we have startup.sh so we just need to do dot slash startup.sh to start the application i think i have already started this application if we have already started we can able to access this one on port number 8080 from the browser so i'm just taking the public ip address of this one and going to browser and 8080 that's it yep i could able to connect to this one and uh, if I go to manager app here it is going to ask for the username and password again these credentials also updated in the same file and if I go up where yep you can see here manager GUI role helps us to log in the user on the command prompt so here we need to use the user as a tomcat password as a secret so I will just connect to the tomcat server from the browser user next okay secret i have given the password okay so i have logged into my tomcat server and if i see these all are the default applications now we need to deploy a web app application from maven server to tomcat server for that we should copy the application into the tomcat server under location called web app if i go out and pwd present working directory we are under opt apache tomcat and if i do ls okay cd web app to which location under slash opt apache tomcat web apps okay into this location we need to copy our application so by using maven it is automatically copies the application over here okay anyway maven server is here we need to do some configuration changes to make it deploy into the tomcat server in this location okay so this is tomcat server and this is maven server what and all configuration changes we should do and how to update we are going to see in the next lecture Thanks for watching. See you there. Hello folks. Welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to see how to deploy a var file on Tomcat server using Maven. I have already updated a document under Revd Maven repository. You can go and have a look if you have any issue. And here if you see prerequisites Maven server and Tomcat server, which is already up and running. Next thing, download Maven artifact web app archetype we have already downloaded and we have named it as a second maven project next thing we need to update the palm.xml so in the palm.xml we need to provide the what is the tomcat server so here we need to replace with the local host with the tomcat server nothing but with this server ip address and also path 
after configuration as a which application we would like to access that is the path we need to specify like uh, after this manager okay if i click on examples here it is coming as a examples right similar way if we want to access our application what are the changes we would like to do okay that is what we need to do once that is done we need to create a settings.xml so this settings.xml we are going to create under dot m2 directory of the root user and we just update this one okay these dots are not needed so here we are going to update the id is same but username and password in our case username is admin password also admin okay if you remember i just shown you right this is tomcat server yep here you can see username and password both are admin and admin this configuration is updated which means that we are ready to deploy web app application on tomcat using our maven and here we should use the command called mvn tomcat 7 and deploy okay so far we haven't executed deploy goal first time we are executing deploy goal because we have found out the remote repository or remote location where we can able to copy it that is the reason we need to use and tomcat 7 is this is the one okay we are using a plugin called tomcat 7 with this we can deploy it on either tomcat 7 or 8 okay in our case we are using tomcat 8 all right so let's update this configuration i'm just copying this information like just to plugins i'm copying and go back to our maven server so this first terminal is our maven server second terminal is tomcat server and even you can find the name over here and go inside to second demo project and vipom.xml and this should be under plugins you can see there is a tab called plugin under plugins we need to provide plugin i have copied and after copying we need to update some of the information that is the url of our tomcat server so i'm just updating it over here let me grab the tomcat server url so this is the url okay without port number 88 i'm copying because it is already there okay i have taken no slash then here we need to give the hello world web app is there in our case as what url we want to access let it be our project name that is second maven project okay let it be with the same name i would like to access this application and save the file that's it now we have updated our palm.xml to deploy the application on tomcat 7 server or 8 server and this is the version we are using if you see group id artifact id and version so this is the information we are using next thing we need to create a servers.xml so for that we are under slash root in our project go back to one directory up and if i do ls minus la you can see dot m2 directory is there go inside to dot m2 directory and let's create settings.xml okay settings.xml i am creating and we need to copy the content which is there in our github repository so we just copy the content of this one it is like a what is the server and what is the username and password these credentials we want to set it up so let me go to password password is admin right in our case all right so we have updated and one more thing is here we don't need dots sorry all right we have done all the settings now it's time to deploy our application on the tomcat for that again i'm switching back to my second demo project so even let me change the palm.xml according to this because we have named it as a second maven project let me remove it all right so we have saved this file and let's run our maven tomcat 7 so we are going to use the plugin called tomcat 7 and goal is deploy okay so we are deploying let's see what happens so we are doing deploy at the first time so some packages or libraries are missing still in our local repository it is just pulling those okay once this is done in this location we could able to see second demo project i think it's successful yep build is successful and you, you can see deploying the var file it is deploying on this location 
okay which means that in the target environment it will go to the web apps directory and copied it over here now let's go to browser and we should able to access our application i'm going back okay it is not picked up the our latest application it will be show up over here let me refresh it yes you can see here second demo project now if i click on this one we could able to see the hello world hello world is the content which is there in our web app application so if i go to my maven server and uh, if I do tree, you can see here we have a index.jsp, right? So if I open this file, so it is under src main and web app and index.jsp. So src main web app index.jsp. If you are getting confused with Linux commands, maybe it's time to go through with the Linux basics course. I have a separate course for Linux for DevOps engineers. Maybe you can go through with that. So if I open this file, you can see here, hello world, same content is appearing over here. Let's do some changes to this code. And if we deploy it, it should be able to build the latest code and get it deployed into the Tomcat. That's what it should do, right? So let's edit this file for a quick test. And I'm going to change it as a, I will add one more line that is H2. Welcome to Maven deployment goal okay so i'm just adding some content let's add and if i do again maven so we need to do entire compilation test build and deploy everything you need we need to do mvn for all those purpose tomcat 7 colon deploy is fine why because deploy means that is the last goal which we have in the list of the default life cycle so it take all the goals into the consideration and it's execute and build the application and deploy it okay there is some problem there is a typo in the command so tomcat 7 colon deploy all right so you can see all the goals has been executed over here and build is successful it's saying that application is already exist in the target Seems Maven is not that much intelligent to remove the target environment content and, and deploy the new one. So maybe what we can do, we are going to delete the content and re-execute the same thing. So here, if I do ls minus l, sorry, ls minus l, and it has been deployed 13, 06, sorry, 612, 629 date, if I see, 633 it is not latest one four minutes ago it has been deployed let me remove it rm minus rf and uh, i'm just deleting it now you can see there is no second demo project so now we are going to execute this once again this time it should be able to deploy it successfully yes all right it has been successfully deployed and if i do again ls minus l we could able to see the latest code and if i go to browser and if i refresh one more line should be there which we have added yes which means that our maven can able to build the latest code and deploy it into the target system usually we are updating our code in the maven but uh, it should be come through the git so whenever developers push their code onto the git from there we are going to pull into our maven system and we do the build but build we don't do it directly on the maven we usually do it from the jenkins how to build our application from the jenkins we are going to see in the next section thanks for watching and see you there hello folks so far we have seen that as a developer we have pushed code onto the git and from the maven we pulled this code and we have built it while building it gathered the dependencies or it pulled dependencies onto maven system build it it runs the unit test cases and even deploy it into the tomcat server but usually we don't do all these steps in the maven we are going to use a continuous integration tool called jenkins which can initiate the maven rather than we go into maven and doing all the steps manually so in this section we are going to see how does it work for that one, of course, we need a Jenkins server. I will show you how to set up the Jenkins server in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you there. Hello folks. In this lecture, we are going to see how to install Jenkins. For this one, I have already created a documentation. Quickly go through with that documentation and set up the Jenkins. 
This is Jenkins installation documentation. We need to create an EC2 instance and it should contains the Java, Java 1.8. Of course, we have done the same thing for our Maven server as well, right? Once this is done, we need to set up the Java home path because Jenkins requires the Java. Once this is done, we need to install Jenkins. Okay, so these are the steps where we are going to add a additional repo and install Jenkins. Next thing, we need to start the Jenkins, which means that we can able to access it from the browser. To access it from the browser, like Tomcat public IP colon 8080. Once this is done, we need to do some configuration settings we need to do. Anyway, we are going to do this one on the console itself. If you get any doubt during the setup of Jenkins, maybe you can follow this document. I try to update this document frequently. Let's go and create an EC2 instance to install Jenkins. So I'm going to launch instance. Same thing, Amazon Linux, how we have done our Maven server. Same thing we are doing, T2 micro instance. Nothing to change, nothing to change. And here, add tags step, step 5. Name, I'm going to give it as a Jenkins server. Because I have already one server with the same name. Maybe it get conflict, so I will give Jenkins instance. Next, and security group, I'm going to use a security group which is already there or else let me create it to avoid confusion. Jenkins, Jenkins Maven SG. And we need to add port number 8080 because Jenkins runs on port number 8080. That's the reason, choose the custom TCP rule and 8080. And here I'm opening for the internet but it is not recommended. Maybe you can open for your own network. So if you are want to know what is your own network, just go to browser and search for what is my IP.com. It will give your public IP address, which means that your internet IP, that IP range you can add if you want to avoid the security violations. But in this case, anyway, it is lab. And again, I'm going to delete it once the lab is done. That's the reason I'm opening for the internet. Next, launch it. So while launching, I'm going to choose the existing key pair which we have created that is Maven key. Acknowledge that I have this key pair. Just launch it. Okay, it takes a while. Let's wait for a while. And uh, I'm filtering it with the running instances. Instance state. Okay, instance state is running. So it will show up only running instances. Once our Jenkins server is up and running. Yep, I think it's up and running now. Okay, whenever we get public IP, which means that we can able to log into our system. Take this public IP and go back. I have already logged into my Maven server. This is Maven and this is Tomcat. I don't think so. We need Tomcat access. Let's exit. I'm closing it and let's connect to our Jenkins server now. And we have the key pair, right? That is okay. Here we have a Maven key and EC2 minus user is the username and uh, okay to launch the instance now we have logged into our jenkins server and uh, for better understanding let me switch to root and host name jenkins i am giving and sudo su minus so that it will be converted it as a jenkins so it's easy for us to identify where we are working as a first step we need to install java so yum install java minus 1.8 star okay we are installing java yes to install Okay, Java installation is successful. Next, we need to download Jenkins. If you do yum install Jenkins, okay, those packages are not available by default in the default repo. That's the reason we need to add additional repo. That information is already available over here. If you click on this link and uh, this is the procedure to add it to our system. So I'm just executing these commands blindly and uh, we are adding key. Now, if we try to yum install Jenkins, it should work. Yes, I want to install it. Seems it may take a while. Okay, Jenkins installation is completed. If I check for service Jenkins status, it's not running. Service Jenkins start. Again, if I check for status, it is running. Now I can access this application from the browser. So here we have the public IP address, copy this public IP and once this is done, go to browser, control V colon 
8080. Make sure that you have opened port number 8080 in the security group level, otherwise it doesn't allow. And you can get the password from this path in your Jenkins server. Let me take that password. So you will get the password in this location. I have taken this never and uh, install suggested plugins or select plugins to install. Okay, otherwise you can just close this if you don't want to do. So I'm just installing the suggested plugins. By default, we need few plugins. If we use this one, it installs most of the commonly used plugins. Make sure that it installs Git, then SSH build agent, then Maven. So I couldn't able to find Maven. Anyway, we are going to install it even though once the installation is completed. Okay, it took a lot of time because I, I have used it first time to install the default plugins. Anyway, username, I'm going to give it as a Jenkins. Password also Jenkins123 I have given. Okay, full name Jenkins, Jenkins at email.com. Okay, something I'm giving and save and continue. And this is the URL, let it be and finish it. And start using Jenkins all right so this is how we can set up our Jenkins server in next video we are going to add our Maven build server as a slave to this Jenkins thanks for watching and see you there in previous lecture we have seen how to install Jenkins before adding our Maven build server as a slave to Jenkins server we need to do some configurations okay for that one first go to manage Jenkins and uh, we need to check out whether all the plugins are available to add our Maven as a slave system for this one. For that one, let's go to available tab and search for Maven. I don't think so Maven plugin has been installed during our default setup. So we need to install Maven invoker plugin, even Maven integration plugin also I'm selecting it and install without restart. All right, we have installed Maven invoker plugin. Go back to dashboard. Again, manage Jenkins. Let's go and check what and all installed plugins are there. Basically, we need GitHub. Okay, we need GitHub plugin. I think uh, GitHub plugin is already installed. Okay, now we are going to add our Maven build server as a slave to this Jenkins server. For that, just go to manage Jenkins. And here we have manage nodes and clouds. So here we are going to add a new node. So our node name I'm going to give Maven build server okay because it is a maven server just naming it as a maven build server or else we can give slave whatever name is convenient for you and it is a permanent agent next and here the name is maven build server let it be the description and executors nothing but how many jobs can it run parallelly i'm going to give five by default if you see on your master node you can execute two jobs at a time here i'm i just given five and the remote root directory we should have a remote root directory so to provide this one we need to create a separate user for on maven system that is a best practice so here this is maven server right if i go to cat slash etc password which tells that how many users are there we just have only one user that is ec2 minus user i am going to add one more user that name is jenkins so user add jenkins okay we are adding a user called jenkins and let's set up the password for Jenkins. Jenkins at 123 and same I am giving. All right, so I have given the password. And uh, one more thing is we need to add this user to the sudoers file. Okay, this is the sudoers file. Here we need to add our Jenkins server to the sudoers file. For that, go to Shift G, nothing but capital G, which means that it will go to the end of the file. And uh, we are going to add under root okay jenkins and we are going to add this one okay which means that whenever we execute any admin command don't ask the password that is the meaning of this one so we have created a user called jenkins and added him as a admin now another thing is we need to enable the password based authentication okay so for password based authentication we just need to edit slash etc ssh ssh d underscore config by default ec2 instance doesn't comes with the password based authentication so just edit this one and search for password okay 
which goes to the password authentication we should enable this one so by default it will be commented it out so just remove the comment and there is one more entry with the same password authentication which specifies the no we need to comment this one so i just removed the comment in this lane and added over here that's it once this is done we just need to refresh the sshd service sshd reload okay sorry service sshd reload which means that we have enabled password based authentication on the maven server now we can use jenkins server to connect with the maven now let's go and add this maven server as a slave to our jenkins server so go back and uh, remote root directory i'm going to give slash home slash jenkins that is the default jenkins home directory you can go and check it out over here pwd so let me switch as a jenkins user okay pwd if i do i am under slash home jenkins directory okay this is the path we have given which means that it will be useful as a workspace directory next to labels no need to provide labels which means that in case anything with that name uh, it is going to take by this agent something like that next to uses all this stuff is not needed next thing is launch agent by connecting to the master launch agent via execution of the command on the master or else launch agent via ssh so usually we will choose this option okay which will generate few files jpnl files we need to execute on the client side but as a quick process i am going to use the launch agent via ssh and here host name nothing but the server name of the remote host which means that our maven system let me get the ip address of our maven system here i am going to use the private ip because both are in the same vpc if you don't know vpc which means that it is like a same data center so it will connect with the private ip address we don't need to provide the public ip so i'm just giving the ip address next credentials we just created jenkins user right those credentials we should add over here add jenkins and uh, here username and password we are providing what is the username that is jenkins password also jenkins at 123 and uh, i'm giving id also jenkins and description no need okay hopefully i have given the right password and select the jenkins okay so we have given the jenkins credentials and uh, one last thing we need to do that is known verify host it should be non-verifying verification strategy okay save this one and we could able to connect to our slave system so let's open this one and see the logs okay it is trying to connect to our remote system yes you can see agent successfully connected which means that it has been registered i mean to say our maven server has been registered as a agent to this system and once this is done you cannot see any red cross mark over here which could able to connect and it should able to gather the information about our maven build server all right so that's all for this lecture in next lecture i am going to show you how can we execute a build on the remote system i mean to say maven build system by using the jenkins this is how in the real world we are going to use the build servers that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture thanks for watching so far we have set up our maven server as a slave or agent to our jenkins server now it's time to create our first job nothing but we have the first demo project right so that one i would like to build from the jenkins but the build should happen on my maven server if that is the case we need to create our first job so if you are familiar with the jenkins well and good if not just follow along with me because i just want to show you how usually we use jenkins and maven in the real world so i'm going to create first demo project and it is a maven project select it and the next thing is if you scroll down you can see here there is a option that restrict whether this project can be run means if you want to restrict where do you want to run this project that you can mention it over here of course we need to restrict this one on to run on our maven server right why because it is a java project and maven server only can able to run usually in the real world you will have multiple uh, slave systems or agent systems each system can run one kind of application if it is a maven of course we can run java if it is a node.js it runs on other system if it is a dotnet or c sharp application it runs on another build server 
like that it would be so in this case we want to restrict java applications to run on our maven server so select this application and we need to search for our maven system so we have named it as a maven build server so there is no space maven build server okay once this is done we need to give the url of our application so we have our code in our github so select the git and i have already opened our github url so that is revd first demo project and take the copy of the url and provide the url in the github and the next thing branch to build nothing but on which branch this code is available of course it is master even you can go and check it out over here once you have given this one next we need to provide maven version okay there is a error i will talk about this error in a while so we know the goals right that is clean install okay these are the goals we are executing see this error or warning jenkins need to know where your maven is installed so far we have installed maven in our maven system but our jenkins server doesn't know that is where global tool configuration comes into the picture there we need to specify where is our java located where is our git located where is our maven located all this information we need to provide so let me apply and save this job we cannot able to run this job even though we run it is not going to successful why because we haven't configured our maven server details where our git is located maven is located and java is located so once you save this job let it be the job and go to dashboard and go to manage jenkins here we have a option called global tool configuration so select this option if you scroll down you can see here jdk installations nothing but where is your java here we need to provide the path of java where it is installed on our maven server not on the jenkins server so install automatically i am just disabling it so just go to our maven server so this is our maven server right so we have already configured so this is jenkins and if you do remember java path is there under echo dollar path but i don't think so it will be affected over here because we haven't configured in the jenkins server so we need to search for root bash underscore profile path so sudo cat slash root slash dot bash underscore profile okay so you can see here this is the java home path right just to take this one and provide in the java here name we just need to give java home okay even java 1.8 also i can give okay there is no uh, hard coded value for this but this should be the path of your java home similar way git where exactly does it installed so jenkins is installed okay this is default just uh, this can be anything and uh, if i search for where is git sorry git so this is the path git is installed so let me go to git okay next gradle and ant these all are not required but these plugins we have installed that is the reason it is propagating next thing is maven so where is our maven is installed i am going to give maven 3.6.3 this is the version we have installed on maven you can check out that under opt okay here we have you can see this is the apache maven and this is the path right even you can check the path m2 underscore home path this is the path we need to provide so i don't want to install automatically and give the path that's it with this information we can able to run our job without any issues let's go back to our job first demo project let's build it whenever we build it is going to create a cd minus pwd sorry cd cd tilde pwd i am under my home jenkins this is the path we have given in our slave configuration right and if i go to workspace here it is going to create the project and build the project which means that it copies the our source code into this location build it and it generates the artifacts out of it so let's build it now and let me open it so it is pulling the code and it started executing you can see goals clean install and it is doing all the jobs okay all right our build is successful i ran it some time back that's the reason all the packages are copied into the local repository that's why there is no issue so build is successful 
and if I go back to my Maven server and if I check for LS, you can see here first demo project. If I go inside and if I check LS, you can see here palm.xml, src and target and tree if I give, you can see app test dot class. Even we should have app class, okay, which is class files are generated after build. And if I do LS minus LA, timestamp also 754. If I do date, Okay, it's just 7.55, one minute ago, it has been created. This is how we can able to build our applications from the Jenkins. Okay, so in Maven, we don't use or we don't execute commands directly. Usually, we use integration tool, continuous integration tool called Jenkins, which can interact with our build servers or build systems to build the artifacts. Hope this has given enough information how the Jenkins master and slave does work and also how we can use Maven in the real world. One last thing I'm going to do in the next video that is we are going to build our second demo project as well quickly so that even you can understand little more better how does it work. Thanks for watching and see you there. Hello folks, welcome back. In this lecture, I'm going to create a new job that is for second demo project but that code is not yet available in our github repository so we need to push our code into the our github repository then only we can build it from the jenkins because jenkins can able to pull the code from the source code management so for that purpose i am going to create a new repository called second demo project so that we can update our code over here so new i am going to create a second demo project okay this is the name i am giving let it be public and create a repository and uh, even i am going to my maven server here we have created our second demo project go inside to that so convert this one into a git repository for that git init dot which means that we are converting this into a local repository now i am going to associate my remote repository with the local repository for that we just need to execute this command go back so we have associated our local repo with remote repo and one more thing git i think i have removed the target directory over here anyway we don't want to push target directory onto the github because we will take the source code and build wherever we want and this source code should contains enough information what is required to build the application that is where our palm.xml is helping us anyway git add dot git status so we are adding all these files to our remote repository git commit minus m initial commit so we have committed our changes into our local repository next thing is we need to push our code into remote repository for that git push origin master okay i'm just pushing our code onto remote repository now it's asking for the remote repository credentials so revd okay so i have committed my changes now if i go and refresh i could able to see our code over here once our code is here, it is very easy to build from our Jenkins server. Just to take the URL of our remote repository, go back and create a new item. And this time, second demo project, I am naming it. And Maven project, go here and uh, restrict this to run on specific system. That is Maven build server. Next thing, git. Usually we name it as a agent or client okay so url is this one and we don't require any credentials and it is master branch i hope yes and go back and clean install okay same thing i am doing and apply save now let's build it and we'll see what happens so i am opening the build output yes it could able to successfully execute our goals and uh, some packages it couldn't able to find in our local repository so it is pulling from the central repository it may take a while all right we have successfully completed our build process from jenkins again this build happened on maven and if i go to my maven slash home jenkins directory here under workspace you can see the one more project that is second project and a tree if i do you can see the var file so this var file we can deploy wherever we want this is a web application again we have a tomcat server right we can deploy it onto the tomcat server but that can be done through the jenkins we don't do it with the maven maybe i have already covered that in my devops project you can check it out how does it work 
but this is how we can use maven to do all the build activities but we don't execute commands directly on the maven once it is set up and working fine we will be managing maven with the jenkins i hope it has given you a clear idea how to work with maven as a developer and as a devops engineer in next video i will be talking about the learning path once you have learned maven what things you can learn to shape up your career that we are going to discuss in the next lecture thanks for watching and see you there good morning and good evening everyone in today's lecture we are going to talk about artifact repository so the agenda of today's class is we are going to know about what is artifact artifact repositories available in the market then we are going to talk about a jfrog artifactory and how to install jfrog artifactory then how to integrate with maven so these are the topics we are going to talk about in today's class before talking about our starting artifact repository do you have any doubts whatever we have discussed in our classes so far if so please let me know we'll discuss that first and we'll go here because it is related to the maven again we are going to still working with maven now we'll see how integratively maven and artifact is going to work all right since no question if you don't have any questions in the chat you can just specify even uh, in the middle of the class if i ask uh, you cannot able to speak you just type it in the chat that okay if you i don't have any questions or no questions that would be helpful for me to understand how we are going okay fine so with that let's start so first we'll understand what is artifact so if you do remember we are talking about artifact from our uh, maven classes where i'm saying that oh, maven is going to generate a artifact whenever it complete its build stage so what do you mean by artifact whenever we any developer develops the code it is available in the source code it is available in the readable format in that particular language it means it is a source code where they develop the code and they can use that one to build a artifact now to build an artifact we need to do some activity in between nothing but compilation we called it whenever we compile any source code if source code is fine then it is going to generate the outcome the outcome which comes out of the source code that we call it as a artifact let's take an example that we are using java code whenever you compile your java code you are going to get either jar let me take a note so whenever you are going to build java okay from java you are going to get an artifact as a dot jar or dot var or dot er okay these three are the outcomes of the java similar way if you take the dot net okay most probably it is a dot exe okay dot exe extension so these we call it as a outcomes of your source code the outcomes of our source code we call it as a artifacts now why do we need an artifact why can't we use the source code itself there is a two reasons behind why we are not using source code first thing is source code is not understandable by your system your system cannot understand the source code that is the reason we need to convert it into a understandable system understandable language then we need to compile it another problem is if i give the source code people may use it i mean to say they may not come back to 
come back to me for the same stuff let's take an example that we have built a very good pro application and uh, if we make the source code available they can modify a little bit of this application and they can name it as their own application now what happens whatever efforts i put to build that application are gone another guy is able to take it without any efforts that's the reason we don't share our companies doesn't share source code with their clients to uh, retain their customers to retain their customers with them they are going to share only execu executable files not the source code so whenever they need any changes to the executable files are they for their applications again they have to go back to the guys who has developed that application so that you can get the business repeatedly repeatedly and another advantage with that one is maybe another guy is looking for similar product then i have already developed my project product earlier for other client and i can do little bit of modifications to the existing code and i can make it as a different project then we can able to uh, build a one more pro product relevant to that one to give you an example that somebody has or some company has built an application for uber to book your cabs from in the online now if we give the source code maybe uber guys can able to maintain it of course but they can build new applications out of that with the uber again maybe ola but if the uber guys doesn't have source code then ola guys may reach to the same company that you have developed the one application to uh, one of the cab booking website or application similar kind of application i need but additionally i need these features now for that company it is already for that company it is quite easy because already they have an experience in that particular stuff at the same time they can resell the product so they can what i can say increase their business so these two reasons keeps the source code is in hidden format or not like a open source but nowadays there are more open source applications are available even you can modify and you can name it if you take an example of linux okay linux have at least 300 or 350 plus flavors because linux is a open source application or operating system even you can take the kernel of linux and change a little bit of the existing code and name it as a your own application os okay that is possible in the linux because linux is a open source so in the open source platform you can take the existing code and modify a little bit and you can release it as a your application but it doesn't work for the all the applications and uh, some of the enterprise applications they don't do that one okay so now you understood why we are not giving the open source open so, sorry source code because they want to retain the business at the same time um, what i can say it is not understandable by the system now what happens whenever you do the compilation so whenever we do the compilation the compiler can able to understand the source code and it converts into the binaries binaries nothing but zero ones okay that is where the bins comes into the picture so binaries it will con sorry the the code is converted into the binaries and those binaries will be understandable your system your system can understand only zero ones right so those are come from the source code the outcome of this what you can say binaries sorry yeah binaries are uh, artifacts will have the similar kind of information or same information to understand by your systems okay now all the binaries sorry all the artifacts doesn't convert into the binaries because some binaries or some artifacts can be understandable by the application let's take an example of java application whenever you want to install java application you need a some application server 
you need a application server why application server because even though uh, jar or var files those are not understandable by your system directly the application server can able to understand it that's the reason whenever we are installing java applications we are also going to use the application servers like tomcat websphere or uh, weblogic all these all are the application servers first we need to we should have an operating system on top of that one application server then we are going to install the application so applications can understand these artifacts okay now we understand what is artifact artifact is a outcome of the your source code now what is artifact repository so as so far we know the source code repository or version control system called git so git is a source code management or version control system where it maintains the source code only it cannot maintain or it cannot handle the outcome of the source code if you can if you are doing that one maybe you can store the outcome of your uh, source code but it is not right way to handle okay you are using a tool which is uh, work for some purpose and you are using for other purpose so that is the reason we don't use the git repository as a artifact repository that is that is where the artifact repositories came into the picture and they can hold the outcome of this source code outcome of this source code nothing but whatever jar or var er files are coming right these files can be hold by your artifact repository your artifact repository does it hold only the outcome of the jars vars and ers or else uh, i mean to say artifacts no it again it has two advantages one is it is going to hold the outcome of your source code nothing but it is hold artifacts as well as to build your artifact we need some dependencies if you do remember in our previous classes we have talked about maven is going to pull the dependent libraries from the maven repository so instead of pulling the repositories from the maven repository we are going to pull it from the artifact re artifact repository artifact repository means sorry yeah artifact repository it means artifact repository is going to hold or maintain the outcome of artifacts as well as it gives the dependencies information if we go i have already logged into my system so this is maven server if you see i am under my dot m2 directory i told you that this is a local repository of your maven and if you see there is a repository directory under repository directory we have some packages these packages are downloaded whenever we executed the command called mvn install if you do remember it is going to download all these dependencies and keep it in your system okay so now from where it is going to download it is downloading from the browser rather than using internet or public network you can still download these dependencies from the artifact repository so artifact repository is going to communicate with your public network and from there it downloads and it keeps a copy of the repository sorry libraries and it gives to the maven server as well so let's take this one so first if i assume that this is my maven server and this is my artifactory and this is my internet connection okay so assume that from internet currently i am downloading from my internet to my maven server rather than doing this one if you have the artifact repository in between you can just speak with your artifact repository it is going to download from the internet and keep the libraries required libraries here as well as give it to your local system nothing but the maven server where you are building your application okay so two two advantages of using the 
artifact repository first thing is it is going to store the store artifacts okay it is store artifacts and also it gives the libraries gives libraries required for build okay so to build whatever libraries are required for your maven those also given from your artifact repository so these two advantages making the artifact is necess necessary in our devops process so artifact is necessary in our devops process to give the required libraries to your build build tool as well as to hold the outcome of your build tool okay so that is how the artifact repository does work now we are going to see what and all artifact repositories are available in the market we are going to see what and all artifact repositories are available in the market before going to that one you just see this one what is an artifact repository an artifact repository manages you the end-to-end -end artifact life cycle and supports different softwares packages manage package management systems while providing the consistency to your ci cd workflow an artifact repository is both a source for artifact needed for a build so whatever artifacts are needed for your build it is going to hold those artifacts and a target to deploy artifacts generated in the build process so to deploy the artifacts once after your build process so this also we can able to store now we are going to see what and all artifact repositories are available in the market i'm just searching for artifact repositories in the market you can see here top 10 artifact management devops tools if i go here and uh, you can see here type of artifact management devops tools helix core okay this is version control system i think next arkeva cloud smooth sorry cloud smith and jfrog artifactory so this is what we are going to talk about it and plop sorry pull next sonotype nexus ngate my kit npm and docker hub okay docker hub also a source code management repository we are going to talk about uh, this one in the later point of time whenever we are dealing with the microservices but at this moment we are going to talk about the one of the repository source code man sorry artifact repository called jfrog okay so why we are choosing the jfrog because nowadays this is one of the trending artifact repository because it have the full control of your artifacts while you are storing and also it have a lot of features as well okay and they release features very frequently earlier we were using the sonotype nexus in current my in my project current i am using the artifactory so I thought that it's better to discuss the artifactory. I have done some research. So it is saying that artifactory, JFrag, JFrag artifactory is the uh, one of the best artifact repository at this moment. Right? So now we are going to talk about JFrag artifactory. So what JFrag artifactory does do? It is going to store the outcome of your artifacts and also it is going to give the whatever required libraries for your uh, build process libraries as well as sometimes it may require other artifacts those also it is going to queue okay so now jfrog artifactory okay it is from the jfrog apart from the product name is artifactory okay product name is artifactory which will hold the artifacts so name is more relevant and apart from this they have few other products okay you can see here these are the products they have but we are just concentrating on the artifactory 
so now we'll talk about the how artifactory does work before uh, uh, talking about that one let's see how we can install the artifactory once we have installed the artifactory we will just go and uh, uh, experience the browser how does it work okay so now to install artifactory on our system first we need to launch an ec2 instance because we are going to install artifactory in our ec2 instance instead of installing artifactory in our ec2 instance you can still go with a cloud way that is if i search for artifactory sorry artifactory download jfrog artifactory download if i give so open source if i go here you can see here downloads okay this is the official website where you need to download your repository go to downloads you can see here if you are installing on linux system tar.gz if it is a windows you are going to download it from here if it is mac from here you need to download so we are going to use the linux so if i click here it is going to download in my local system whatever is required okay but i have already downloaded i don't want to uh, waste our time so i'm just pausing it you can see here 399 mb is there almost 400 mb you need to download it into your system so i will tell you the procedure how you can download it into your system so i have created a document called setup jfrog artifactory i'm going to share with you in uh, after this class so the process to install the artifact repository you need at least to t2 small r to small ec2 instance why because the resources which is required to hold artifact repository is 2 gb ram it is necessary okay 2 gb ram comes in the t2 micro instance types in aws not the t2 micro okay so let's go and launch an ec2 instance i'm launching an ec2 instance launch ec2 instance and this is amazon linux let it be and t2 micro if you see t2 micro one cpu and one gb ram but we need two two gb ram so i'm going to choose the t2 small and it doesn't come under to free tier account so they will charge you but the charges are very minimal no need to worry for our practice there is no much impact and i am just creating this instance and i will name it as a artifactory jfrog artifactory okay next security group we need to create a new security group or choose existing security group i am choosing or creating new security group called devops security group devops sg next currently only port number 22 it is opened but artifactory is going to run on port number 8080 so i am adding one more rule that is port number 80 sorry 81 so this is the port number which it uses to run or access our uh, artifact repository application so i have given 8081 and launch instance so instead of using the test key pair i am going to create a new key pair that is devops key so we'll name it as a more relevant the names as well so download it whenever you create a new key pair you must download it and launch the instance so it takes a while to get it ready meantime i will copy this key pair into the my appropriate location i'm just pausing the screen okay so my server is getting ready yes it is in running state i can access it with the public ip copy the public ip and go and connect to your system then key we are going to use the devops key not the test key pair from now onwards we are going to use the devops key 
open and uh, username is ec2 minus user now i have logged into my artifact repository server but i haven't configured the artifact yet so now what we need to do i'm going to become a root user su do su minus and clear the screen and let's increase the font size and go to opt under opt we don't have any artifact repository now i can download my artifact repository over here wget and if we use this one what will happen it is going to download it into our linux system sorry windows system but i want to download it into our linux system so i am copying the link address so it will copy the link address whatever is there now let's go and uh, execute this step no this doesn't work because ends it should be ends with this one so where i have got this link okay i think we should remove the last stuff and let me download it no not this link but anyway uh, I, I was searching for the link i found it this is the link to download it so wget and this is the link to download it is going to download the pro version of 6.19.1 yeah okay sorry i forgot to tell you um so there are two versions on artifact repository one is open source another one is the pro version pro version nothing but paid version now what is the difference between the so open source and pro version so open source nothing but you can use without any licensing but pro version you require a license so i could able to download it in the local system and again i need to copy into the remote system rather than that one what i have done i have installed the pro version or i have downloaded the pro version rather than open source so i can search for the jfrog artifactory download platform and if i go here yep you can see here this is to download the linux i can download it from here or else i can click on this one and copy the link address okay copy link address this is another way of uh, taking it i hope this is the link it works now it is also giving the same link isn't it let me try it w get and uh, only tar dot gz no okay anyway what you need to do is you need to create your account and uh, what I can say you need to download it why because the open source we can download it and do it if you have the Enough bandwidth you can try that one. Okay, and this is another artifactory uh, Sorry product artifactory edge, but we should go with the just artifactory uh, Sorry jfrag artifactory. This is user in uh, guide what and all uh, What I can say dependencies it requires what is the capacity you need all this information is there and if you need pro version yes you can see here this is pro version and uh, you can see here on premises and cloud they are giving again two options either you can install it in on premises or cloud if you choose on cloud you can use your aws account directly you can use aws account directly and you can see here pro one it is 98 dollars per month and if you go with the enterprise up to enterprise we have if you go with the enterprise it may be more cost so it changes the features depends upon the product type okay but anyway we are trying to do it in on premises in on premises uh, this is how what is the licensing cost 2950 dollars but we are going with the free version let's go with the jfrag artifactory enterprise version and you can see here free trail and buy now so if you go with buy now you can uh, have to buy it free trail if you go with the free trail you need to create an account and they give the 30 days free trail 
license you can see here 30 days license and uh, you need to provide your information and uh, you should create an account once you have created an account you can able to download directly to your system that is how i generated this uh, url okay so i just generated it once i have logged into my system and uh, i could able to get this link now i am installing or downloading jfrog art factory onto my system so go to here and uh, wget and if i give this one it is going to download the uh, binaries or sorry whatever application is required to run the jfrog art factory now where i have downloaded under opt you can see here what is the name we got it it is some uh, random keys are there so now i am going to rename it to rename mv download file to I'm just going to rename it as a JFrog Art Factory. Okay, so I just renamed it. Now I'm going to unzip because it is zip format. Once it is unzipped, you are going to see your Art Factory repository pro. Okay, now let's go inside and you can see here there is a binary etc logs. All this information is there so logs is nothing but in case if you are facing any issue while starting your application or some bugs are there then you can go and check it out in the logs and moreover jfrog art factory is written in java so it is a web app and uh, it runs on tomcat what you can do you can install tomcat server on top of that one you can run the jfrog or, or else or else we can uh, directly use this one okay now as i said artifact is required a java without java it cannot run okay first we should install java let me see whether java is installed or not java minus version okay there is no command called java let's install java first okay that is the instruction right first we should install java i am installing java 8 so to install java 8 m install java minus 1.8 star star nothing but after that whatever name it has it it takes that one and minus y y stands for accept to install it it is going to install java on our system all right so java has been installed now if i check clear the screen java minus version you can see here java 1.8.0.252 this is the version it is installed now i would like to start my art factory repository application for that you should go into the bin binaries under this you can see here artfactory.sh artfactory.sh and uh, we can start it by using dot slash artfactory.sh and start okay this is the command we need to execute to start the art factory repository but before starting it net start minus t u l p n okay this is the command to check out what and all applications or ports are used in your system so here you cannot see nowhere that port number 8080 is installed at the same time sorry port number 8081 is used at the same time if i check for ps minus ef grip artifact nothing is there now let's start the artifactory to start it dot slash artifactory dot sh and start this is the command to start it and if i see here ps minus ef grip you can see here there is an application called artifactory is running at this moment and uh, clear the screen net start minus t u l p n okay and if you see here a port number is 8081 is in listen state and it is running java so it is not java on top of java we are running the artifactory now 
I would like to access my artifact repository from the browser. That is where we have opened port number 8081 in our security group, if you do remember. So while creating our EC2 instance, we have opened in the security group DevOps SG. We have opened port number 8081 because we are running our application on port number 8081. If we don't open this one, we cannot access our application. Now let's try to access our application from the browser. So to access our application, we are going to use the URL of this one. URL of our EC2 instance colon port number is 8081. So if we give this one, we can able to access our JFrag artifactory from the browser. Why it is taking long time? Let me see whether it's running or not. So this command will help us that. Okay, you can see here fork. So fork cannot allocate memory. It means that the memory is not sufficient to run this application. Now what we can do is we need to increase the instance size. Okay, there is no other option. In AWS, increasing instance size is quite easy. So now currently it is T2 uh, small. We need to increase it to the next instance size. So to increase it to next instance size, we cannot do it while it is running. Okay, we need to stop the instance. Okay, why? Because it is clearly saying that memory is not enough. Even 2GB is not sufficient. I'm going to increase it to or uh, change it to 4 GB instance size. So we need to stop the instance. Once it is stopped, we can change the instance type. You can see here, uh, change instance type. Okay, whenever we change it, we can change it from the T2 small to some other instance size. Okay. And uh, we can able to work uh, sorry start the application without any issue so in aws it is quite easy to increase the capacity but it is not the case in on premises on premises is quite difficult to do uh, these kind of activities okay now it is in stopped state now i am increasing the instance settings you can see here now it is enabled change instance size and i am changing it to t2 medium apply it that's it now we got the higher capacity again start the instance once it is started our public ip get change okay please remember that whenever you stop and start the instance earlier we were using this public ip right and now it is going to change that is the reason in the real world what do we do we are going to use the elastic ips elastic ips means this is the one but elastic ips are charge chargeable if you don't allocate or don't use it so if you are using then only sorry then only you don't get charged otherwise you are charged with the elastic ips now you can see here ip address has been changed to new one i'm using this ip address to connect to the server devops key ec2 minus user okay and sudo clear the screen then go inside to opt under opt we have artifactory under this one we have bin directory under bin we have dot slash artifactory dot sh start okay this is the command to start it once it is started you can check the services by going to net start by executing net start minus t u l p n enter you can see here 8081 it is in listening listening nothing but it is uh, <coughs> application is running now if i go and access my artifactory with the public dns because public dns also get changes changed and you can see here now you can able to access your artifactory okay
so this is how you can set up your artifactory but uh, please make use t2 medium instance now whenever you want to log into your artifact repository it asks for a username the default username is admin and password is just a password okay so default username is admin and password is just a password if you give that one it is going to configure now you can see here welcome to artifactory this is pro version so we should give the license for this one you can see here copy your license over here i have the license let me copy the license over here we don't have the license right uh, like how whenever yeah whenever you create it you will create an account right then they will send it to your email so this is how you will receive an email okay so in the email you will have the license this is the license we should copy okay my license is here i'm going to drop it into the i'm going to drop it into the here so let me minimize the screen and just to drop it once it is dropped it next it is going to accept the license and set the admin password i'm setting up the admin password as admin at one two three admin at one two three so username is admin and password is admin at one two three and this keys uh, we are going to skip it because uh, we can use the keys uh, to configure but anyway i just skipped now you can see here create repositories now there are 20 plus applications it is going to support 20 plus uh, kind of repository repositories it is going to support among them maven is one of the repository okay so we are currently managing with maven and gems is for the ruby script docker is for containerization debian okay syrian conda okay helm and gradle okay these all are the again we have the gradle build tool is there next uh, uh ngate is there and few other are there but mostly go yeah go chef all these are there but we are concentrating on the maven so we are going to use the maven all right so either you can create a repository from here or you can create it later point of time whenever you choose this one it is going to create a repository in our artifactory okay so you can see here let me increase the answer yeah it is going to create a total five repositories whenever you are creating maven it is creating libs snapshot local libs release local j center libs snapshot libs release okay so these are these are the five repositories it's created by default if you don't want you can skip this step and you can still create manually whatever names you need but let it be as a default one i will tell you how you can create the custom repository for now we are going to choose these repositories and finish it now it's created five repositories okay now before talking about the repository we'll go and uh, see how the artifactory is going to work so now what happens in artifactory in artifactory there is three kind of repositories we can create one is local remote virtual okay in jfrog artifactory we have three kind of repositories again local remote and virtual these three are the three different kind of repositories now local nothing but which will be available locally physically exist i mean to say you can use this local repository to communicate with your maven you can use this local repository to communicate with your maven similar way remote nothing but you can use this one on the jfrog artifactory i mean to say uh, let me go here this is our maven right yep not this one yep this is our maven server pwd i'm under m2 and repository and if i go to opt you can see here this is a maven server under this one we have hello world so this is our maven server in maven server we have the m2 repository right so here it can talk with the only 
local repositories it can talk with the local repositories now remote repository is going to local repository is going to communicate with remote repository local repository is going to communicate with the remote repository so it is available only on remote i mean to say here here local also will be available but from the local from your local system it will go to here local from here local to it will go to the re, re, virtual sorry remote now virtual is nothing but virtual is nothing but combination of remote and local combination of remote and local you can understand more clearly whenever we are work uh, whenever we execute one example about the remote and local we'll go and see now so this is your artifact repository and you have the multiple options over here you have multiple options over here if i click over here you can see here these all are the repositories which are available are created by default which are created by default whenever you set up and you can see here these all are lib release lib snapshot these are we have created we have created nothing but while we choose in the maven right if we don't choose this one this one this one this one and this these all repositories doesn't get create all right now if you would like to create yeah this is the admin panel okay so admin panel it will list out the all the information whatever you could see over here you have the repositories security services import export and configuration advanced all these are available but if you go with the open source you can you may not see these many options because in open source you, they don't give and you can see here there is a local remote and virtual repositories are there we don't deal with these two so these three are the repositories and if i go with the local whenever we create a maven two local repositories got created that is libs release local nothing but whenever you are releasing the libraries are stored over here and uh, libs snapshot local so snapshot nothing but it is a snapshot each and every time we are going to execute snapshot very rarely we go with the releases i will show you the difference between these two okay these two are the local repositories similar way if i go with the remote repositories j center is the remote repository now if i go with the virtual repository yeah virtual repository have the libs release and libs snapshot so this sorry i might have told wrongly so virtual repository is going to communicate with the remote repository so there also we have lib release local lib uh, sorry libs release local libs snapshot local right so the libs release local is going to communicate with this one libs snapshot is going to communicate with this one at this moment it is empty nothing but we haven't uh, have any repositories over here sorry any artifacts over here because this these all are empty repositories at this moment we need to create or we can store artifacts over here i'm just exp exploring you can see here you can click on the artifactory image over here and if i expand it you can see here nothing is there inside to this one even here also and similar way here also nothing here also nothing even under j center nothing is there so what does it mean it is all are empty repositories there is no data in this one once we executed maven build and we push our artifactory you can see this get filled nothing but this snapshot and this snapshot is getting having the our local repository sorry yeah our local repository that is what we are going to see okay so before that one now so far what we have done is we just installed jfrog artifactory nothing but we set it up once we set up we need to integrate this one with the maven we need to integrate this one with the maven to integrate this one with the maven we need to generate we need to generate the palm.xml code palm.xml code so now let's go here and if you see sorry okay if you see palm <clears throat> palm.xml file you can see here you are cloning the dependencies but you are not storing your repository anywhere you are not storing your repositories anywhere now i would like to store my repository in my artifact repository 
in my artifact repository now what i can do i can i i can communicate i mean to say my uh, maven can communicate with the only local repositories that is what i'm trying to say i'm i'm saying right so in local again we have release and snap snapshot now you need to update your palm.xml okay this file palm.xml to communicate with this snapshot local or release local with these two it should communicate for that one what we are going to do is we need to generate a palm.xml type okay xml kind of code now either you can write the xml kind of code or in artifactory there is a future to generate the code there is a future to generate the code for that one you can see here set me up option is there so set me up option is very useful mostly we are going to use this option uh, whenever we would like to generate the code which is required to communicate with our tools so go to the set me up and we are going to generate the maven settings so we are going to generate the maven settings so generate it and while generating sorry go back so while generating we can generate only for this one or else all the repositories for now we need only for this one you can see here you have the distribution management okay so distribution management this is the one we should use and here we are having the snapshots nothing but what we are trying to say to our maven is okay use this snapshot repository to store the snapshots to store the snapshots okay so let me copy this one and if you see here it is saying that id is snapshot whatever snapshots are coming out of your maven should be stored over here this is the ip address this is the ip address and also this is the url this is the public url and don't stop and start your system if you stop and start this is going to get changed and it cannot able to communicate if you want to use the a common uh, what i can say ip address you need to use the elastic ip i will show you how can you use the elastic ip now let's copy this one and update our palm.xml so go here okay so after dependencies we need to copy our code whatever we have copied now what i am trying to say to my maven is you can build it once you build whatever outcome you are getting that outcome you need to store on this system so what is the url of your artifactory this is the url under this one you have a leaps snapshot local repository store in this repository that is the meaning of this particular information okay so we are saying or we are telling to our maven to store build outcome into this particular location okay now we'll see we'll execute the command mvn deploy okay mvn deploy deploy is the one of the life cycle which we are have uh, available in the maven life cycle it is going to create your repository and it deploys in the target location okay now just we are executing maven deploy and we'll see what will happen you can see here it is failed to retrieve the remote metadata velox is so on so so on so what it is doing is it is trying to push this particular repository okay hello world 2.0 snapshot okay snapshot the name itself is having the snapshot and it is trying to push it over there but it could not able to push it why because we told to our palm.xml we told to our palm.xml to store the repository over here mm. but our maven server should have access right our maven server should have access to this particular repository even while we are logging in we have used the credentials admin and password as credentials right similar way you need to give the credentials to your maven server to authenticate with this jfrog art factory so for that one we should use the default user or else it is always a best practice to create a new user it is always a best practice to create a new user so now i am going to create a new user 
you have the admin panel and users here you can create a new user so these three are the default users and we set up the admin user password i mean to say reset now we are going to create a new user so the new user name i'm going to give it as a maven okay maven is the new username and uh, it should have the admin privileges it should have the admin privileges and password i am giving maven at one two three again i am retyping the password maven at one two three okay okay maven at one two three i have given right now we have given the maven at one we are setting up the user called maven at one two three and uh, next what is left out email address okay so i'm giving my email address okay arsr319 at gmail.com this is the email id i'm giving or else i'm giving a email id called demo at gmail.com okay but always a best practice that you should provide the appropriate email for now i'm using the demo at gmail.com and save it now we have created a user called maven and uh, we can use this user to communicate with the artifactory from our maven server okay now if you still see whenever we execute this command okay maven deploy right we are trying to execute whenever we execute this command but it nowhere asking for the credentials it's nowhere asking for the credentials so how can we provide the credentials to the maven now there is a file called ser uh, servers.xml there is a file called servers.xml so the file you need to store under your home directory under your home directory you have .m2 right cd.m2 here you need to store a file called servers.xml so that what will happen it can able to authenticate with the artifactory now next question is who will give the server.xml again in artifactory there is a feature to generate the servers.xml for your repository so what is our repository maven right yep local so snapshot sorry not here i'm going to repositories and uh, libs snapshot local repository and uh, set me up and you can see here currently it is generating the only snippet which is required to update in our form.xml now if you need uh, what i can say uh, server servers.xml you need to choose this option generate maven settings if you choose this one it list out the all the repositories and generate settings now it is going to create a servers.xml file you can see here this is giving the all the information and username it is uh, trying to grab the username but we are going to replace this username and password with our username and password similar way here as well and the remaining all information it is it has remaining all information it has and you can copy this one or you can download the snippet or deploy the snippet so now currently i'm copying it one copying this uh, snippet and go to your system here we are going to create a servers.xml va servers dot x xml okay vi servers dot xml even if you try to download it it is going to download the servers sorry settings dot xml i'm sorry here so it is going to download the settings dot xml even we need to name it as a settings dot xml settings dot xml vi okay so i'm storing my content and if you do remember we need to replace username and password username and password what is our username it is maven okay this is the password same we should copy into here as well okay okay i'm copying the same information over here i just copied now if you see here it is talking about the server okay server maven and password we have given then if you come down you can see here 
it is central repository we we can understand all this stuff later but just for now we have given the credentials okay now again i'm going back to my opt and hello world this is the our project right in this project we are running the maven sorry mvn deploy okay mvn deploy is a command to deploy it in our maven maven location now what it will do it is going to create a jar file and it also going to push this jar file onto the target system you can see here what happened downloading the snapshots so if some snapshots are there from this system url you can see here and artifactory if some snapshots are there it is going to download and you can see here it always talks with the local only it doesn't talks with the any other uh, what i can say repository and snapshots it is going to talk and you can see here uploading the snapshot it is uploading uploaded snapshot it has been uploaded up, updated now if i go and check it out over here these are the our uh, repositories right just let me refresh it because once you refresh you can able to see the what and all has been pushed over here and uh, first we are going to search for the snapshot local you can see here com dot velaxi dot hello world and if i click on this one two dot snapshot this is the snapshot we created right even if you go here and a tree if i execute okay tree is a command which will tell you yum install tree okay tree will tell you the directory structure of your system so i have installed now tree if i execute you can see here okay palm.xml this is the source code this is the test next if i go here target you can see here hello world 2.0 this is the jar file it got created right this is the jar file it copied over here 2.0 okay now if i go and check it out over here you can see here 2.0 snapshot and if i click over here hello world 2.0 jar file okay so earlier i think uh, uh, yeah jar file and palm.x palm palm file also is there and maven uh, metadata xml all this has been copied into the remote repository so now we have the version to maintain it like this our snapshots okay these snapshots we are going to create multiple times why do we create multiple times because whenever we deploy our application they they may find the some errors okay they they are keep on coming back to us that okay update this one update that one once everything is working fine as per the uh, their requirement then we are going to uh, create the versions then we are going to create the version so some features has been en enabled completely and the code is working as expected with the features now we need to name it as a version so whenever we name it as a version we should give the version like va palm.xml we should push the versions okay yeah now if i go and check it under release you can see here under release still nothing is there because we just pushed only the snapshots not the release and the similar way if i check over here you can see here same thing whatever is here same thing has been copied over here dot com and these all are the libraries you can see okay these all are the libraries which is required to build this particular repository <clears throat> okay so now all this has been downloaded earlier it was not having anything similar way if i go and click on the j center nothing is there but j center cache also nothing is there okay so but in the release library nothing is there okay only under snapshots you could see the some data now what we are going to do is assume that this snapshot or this code is working as expected this code is working as expected now i would like to uh, now i would like to change it as a version rather than a snapshot then what we usually do in palm.xml instead of version sorry instead of snapshot we just name it as a version now whenever you remove this snapshot from your code it treats it as a version it treats it as a version and it try to push the code into the this release release directory okay this release repository i mean to say 
okay it is trying to push the code into the release repository but whenever you try to push the code into the re release repository in form.xml we don't have any code related to the release repository so far we have added snippet only for the snapshot only for the snapshot nothing but whenever you create snapshots push it into this repository and we don't or we didn't tell to our palm.xml that what it should do in case if we create the versions or releases okay now let's deploy it now palm.xml is going to create a version i mean to say release but there is no information related to release so obviously it should get failed let's do the mvn deploy okay I'm trying to deploy our code again, but this time instead of snapshot, it is going to create a release. You can see here the error itself is saying that deployment failed, repository element was not specified in the palm.xml inside the distribution management element. So we should mention the uh, what I can say release information over here. How we have generated the snippet for the snapshot, similar way we need to generate the snippet for the release as well so for this one you can click on the lib release local and set me up now if you scroll down you can see the uh, release uh, yep yeah, release repository information snippet so you need to copy this one but uh, distribution management already is created so we just uh, copy only this code we just need to copy only this code into our palm.xml va palm.xml and uh, under distribution management we should add it under distribution management we should add it and escape colon wq and palm.xml you can see here now it has been whenever we are going to do the snapshots if you add the minus snapshot it will go to this particular repository sorry this particular repository if you just add the releases it will go to this repository that is how the maven can understand that is how maven can understand now again i am going to run this command mvn deploy this time it is going to push the snapshot repository maybe something while editing the palm.xml some error distribution management okay here we missed the copying the repository okay let me copy it till here we should copy sorry okay so or else i just add it add this one over there so here okay and the slash is for closing in xml so this is open the repository and close the repository that's it now let's try to build it again mvn deploy now what it do it creates a release and yeah i mean to say version this version it is going to push it into the release repository earlier if you see here lips snapshot repository was there now it is pushing it into the lips release repository and if i go and check it out over here in the artifactory now i'm just to refresh it and if i click on releases now you can see here under release it created a 2.0 and it have the hello world dot uh, sorry 2.0 but in the snapshot the name is you can see 2.0 snapshot and uh, what i can say artifact name as well also is coming as a hello world 2.0 okay so that is how you can push your snapshots or your releases onto the target system okay and here also you can see here releases and com and the necessary files which is required okay this is how you can copy your artifacts onto the artifact repository mm -hmm. now you may ask that why we are storing these artifacts over there the first thing is we need to maintain versions okay we need to maintain versions assume that now 2.0 i have taken and i have deployed it if 2.0 is not working what should i need to do i need to go back to the 1.0 right 
1.0 is not available at this moment it is not available but the all the releases i mean to say 1.0 2.0 3.0 like this all the re releases are maintained by the jfrog artifactory so whenever latest version is not working immediately we can pull the previous version of releases and we can deploy in our target or production environment so that there won't be any outage that is the reason we should maintain the versions and the versions are maintained by the jfrog so jfrog not only maintain the hold the artifacts why should we need to maintain the artifacts because we are going to create so many versions all those versions we cannot maintain in our maven server or in our local repository so all these versions we should push it into the artifactory so that it can maintain assume that this week i have a new release i have released and after a couple of minutes the new release is not working now i would like to go back to the previous release so again i can redirect to use the previous release from my artifactory and pull the that particular artifact from my artifact repository and deploy it so that you can minimize the outage of your application if you use like this okay so this is to hold the artifacts now i just want to show you one more thing okay so this is that it is holding nothing but uploading the artifacts now what we are going to do is i told you that even it is going to give the required dependencies or libraries to our uh, build to our build whatever required libraries are there it is going to pull it from the system sorry pull it from the artifact now what i will do whatever required libraries for my sorry cd tilde clear the screen cd tilde slash dot m2 so i'm going to my m2 directory and uh, under repository you have a lot of files are there right let's just remove it so whenever you remove it what will happen it doesn't have any required libraries now we have given our artifactory in the settings.xml now whenever i build it it should pull the pull the code from the artifactory as shown in the diagram now nothing is there in the maven now if i do maven build or maven deploy what it will do usually it is communicating with the public repository okay public repository and pulling it but now what it will do it will going to communicate with the uh, artifact repository okay so now let's go back to our code slash opt hello world and now mvn deploy mvn deploy you can see here from where it is going to pull the code you can see downloading from the central repository see here all the packages it is pulling and it builds the code okay so the liquid required libraries you can see here i will show you the url you can see the url over here okay url you can see it is coming from the 107 nothing but from artifact repository now maven what does it do it will go and communicate with the artifact repository and the artifact repository can share the required libraries to your build so that's what i said right it is going to do the two activities one is whatever is necessary whatever libraries are necessary for your build it is going to give those libraries as well as once the build is completed it is going to store the outcome of your artifactory into your remote repository those two activities it is doing because we have removed from our local that is the reason it is taking so much time earlier we have the all the repositories in our local system it is not taking much time complete because it is going to artifact under downloading so it will be a bit late why because it is going to store one copy over here same file it will go and communicate over here this should go to internet and download the uh, li libraries and uh, then it should copy over here so there is a little delay and now it maintain the these libraries in the repository now okay all these libraries are maintained in the remote repository as well now let's go and check it out 
okay i'm going back over here and you can see here j center you can see a lot of uh, libraries has been downloaded this is the central uh, repository i told you that maven uh, local enterprise repository right something like that we can use as a jfrog artifactory act like that so these all are which are required to build our particular uh, uh, java project and if you see here j unit is downloaded and com under com Velaxi is there all these are copied into j center repository there is uh, there is Velaxi as well if i do remember okay anyway so these all are there i think it will be at the end because uh, we comes at the end all right now if i go and check it out our build in the starting or anything you can see here downloading from the central okay from where it is downloading it is downloading from the https and this is the url of your jfrog artifactory this is the url of your jfrog artifactory now what i will do i will show you the difference now i will remove the cd tilde slash dot m2 sorry m2 i'm going to my local repository and uh, under repository you can see the files now i will remove again these files and also i'm going to move the settings.xml to one folder ahead now there is no settings.html sorry xml so now what will happen whenever we do build again it doesn't communicate with the uh, what i can say it doesn't communicate with the artifact repository why because service uh, settings.xml will have the artifact repository now settings.xml file itself is not there now it cannot communicate or uh, it don't go and speak with your artifact it directly pull the so it directly pull the so it directly pull the co required libraries from the internet to this system now you cannot see the url which you have seen earlier you were seeing that uploading or downloading uh, re required re libraries from here right nothing but here now it will show you the uh, central maven repository information again i am executing the maven deploy sorry not here cd slash opt hello world okay clear the screen now mvn deploy i'm doing now you can see here where it is going html repo dot maven apache dot org nothing but it is going to public repository to download the all the necessary libraries okay so this is how you can use your uh, artifact repository as central repository for your uh, required libraries as well as the to hold your artifacts <clears throat> okay so that's all about the artifactory we are going to use uh, this one artifactory in uh, upcoming classes as well so for now this information is sufficient to work with artifactory now any questions and if you also see this one the downloading process it is quite faster comparatively earlier um, earlier it should go with the one more system to fetch the uh, required stuff and uh, anyway it is going to fail why because we told in the palm.xml to uh, push the artifacts to this system now credentials are stored in service uh, sorry settings.xml settings.xml file is not there that is the reason it failed Again, if I rerun this game command, this time it won't take this much time because all the libraries are downloaded. Okay. That's how we can use Maven and Artifactory to help our uh, in yeah to help in our DevOps process. Now, any questions? Shankar, I have a question. All this. Whatever we are uh, downloading will be stored in our local repository, right? I mean, like in dot m2. Yes. So it will uh, it won't take directly from dot and m2. Then it it goes to the web, like easy to. Yes. Yes. 
see uh, thing is if you specify the servers.xml nothing but you have a repository in your system then it will go with go on to talk with the repository i mean to say artifact repository if you don't have artifact repository it will go and communicate with the cloud but either it talks with this one or either it talks with this one first time whenever it requires libraries it will store in this one okay either it is pulling from here or it is pulling from here it will maintain the one copy of your libraries in the local system that is always happens even if you see earlier execution we have pulled the uh, libraries from here but uh, if artifactory doesn't have it will go and communicate and pull from here it pulls and it keeps one copy over here and also it keeps one more copy over here now again next time whenever we do the build this time it will go it doesn't communicate with this one because already i have if again it doesn't have it will go and communicate over here same thing will happen in the this route as well so overall concept is just it is very simple earlier whenever we required any libraries for our maven build we were going to internet now we are going to our artifactory uh, what is the benefit of going to artifactory first thing is uh, it is quite faster because uh, you are doing the subsequent builds and multiple projects use the same artifactory that is one thing second thing is you can maintain versions appropriately if you have the artifact repository otherwise you will have a lot of versions in your local repository and you it is not well maintained nothing but you don't understand when was created what how does it uh, i mean to say when was created what and how it is maintained where it is available all this confusion would be there but it is well structured maintained in the art factory that is another advantage and also security going to the public repository to sorry going to the internet to pull the any required libraries is not safer way because you may get the some uh, malicious uh, code through these libraries if somebody want to inject it is quite simple but whenever you use the artifactory it is avoided because the purpose itself is going to uh, scan that one as well in the artifactory so while downloading itself it downloads the only authorized libraries to this system and then only it use in your program so these three advantages we have through the live uh, art factory that is overall concept what we have done and how we can set it up we just need to install it and create the local repositories and give the local repository coding to your maven so maven can understand that one that is what we have discussed in today's session so if in if we restart the server again we need to give the ip address and everything again for the easy to... yes yeah okay i need to tell you about that one so now what will happen whenever i restart stop and start not restart if i stop and start this particular ip address is going to replace so to overcome that problem what you guys can do use the elastic ip so in this public ip if i stop and start my instance it is going to change whenever it change again the code whatever we have mentioned in the form.xml if you see here it is referring to the public ip of this one it is going to change but private ip is constant this is private ip there is a ranges for the public ips and private ips by looking at the ip address we can tell that whether it is a public or private ip okay quickly i will explain what is the difference between public and private ip so so th there are uh, you know right the network starts with 0.0.0.02 maximum 255.255.255.255 .255 that is the maximum range okay yep okay so that is the maximum range this is even 10 but the range is something like this okay network starts with 0.0.0.02 255.255.255.255 you cannot see any ip address uh, beyond this one nothing but 300 dot something that, like that you never find it maximum value you will get this one so among this this is ip version 4 we called nothing but ipv4 
but uh, there is a limitation with this one that is the reason <clears throat> industry start using the ipv6 okay ipv6 also uh, we are still we are started using in some organizations but we'll still we are mostly using the ipv4 so ipv4 range is this one among this we have the public and private ip addresses public nothing but you cannot reuse the ip address nothing but uh, if i have a ip address called uh, 200.200.200.200 i cannot use this ip address or sorry any other person cannot use this ip address one ip address is allocated to only one system in the entire world in the entire world you cannot see the same ip address is used by any other but private ip addresses are reused private ip addresses are reused nothing but you can use that particular ip address to any other per sorry in uh, another people also can use the same ip address if you take If I take this IP address, you can see here 172.31.33.62. Still, other people also can use this IP address. But this public IP address at this moment it is allocated to my JFrag Artifactory system, and uh, it is not going to access. Uh, sorry, it is only going to access this system. It is not available for any other system at this moment. Okay. So public IP addresses are accessible through the internet, but not the private IP addresses. So in the internet, even I can browse this IP address here. If you see here, I use the public URL instead of URL, I can just use the public IP address. Okay. Public IP colon 8081. I can access it, but private IP addresses are not accessible from the internet. So from browser nothing but it is internet right you can see here it is loading but if I try to do colon 8081 this time I'm using private IP address private IP addresses are not accessible through the internet okay now what is the private IP addresses range if you see here here they, they have given the range 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 to 10.255.255.255 .255 .255. this is the one range next range is this one next range is this one so if your ip address is between if i your ip address is starts with the 10 and 10 that is that is a private ip address there is no doubt at all and if your ip address is starts with 172.16 to 172.31 in between is there that is again a private ip address similar way 192.168 Again, this is the private IP address range. So these IP addresses you can reuse any times you can use in organizations. What we'll have we have very limited public IP addresses which are accessible through the Internet. But for each and every laptop or desktop uh, have the its own private IP address. So all these private IP addresses are accessed through the public Internet. That's how it works. Again, it is a vast subject. I mean to say a lot to understand that one, but just for a uh, simple understanding, just understand that if your IP address is in this range, you cannot access directly from the internet. That is the thing you should remember. Okay, because this particular server is running on AWS data center. From here, I cannot able to access my AWS data center server directly. But if I am in AWS data center, maybe I can access it. That is the reason we should have the public IP address for each and every system even Google also if I do the ping google.com okay even it has a public IP you can see here 172.172.217 okay it is a private sorry public IP address so if you see here our public IP range if you see 172.16 to 172.31 out of this range this one so it is a public ip address so that is how you can understand whether uh, it is a public or private if they have given a private ip address to this system google.com cannot be accessible okay and this particular ip address at this moment is mapped to google.com in the world you cannot see this ip address is assigned to any other website or application sorry server
okay so with that even now we need a public ip address sorry we need a public ip address but in aws what happens this public ip address they are keep on replacing it if you need a permanent public ip address that they call it as a terminology as a elastic ip address so here you need to go allocate an elastic ip address and allocate see here ipv4 and they will give you a public ip address now how can i know this is a public ip address it starts with 3 3 is out of this range right it starts with 10 okay 10 or 172 or 192 so it is a public ip and i can allocate this public ip to my system so click on that one and actions this is to release or associate elastic ip address so i'm associating to which system i want to choose associate i want to associate it with the jfrog artifactory and associate it now what happened it has been allocated to my jfrog artifactory and if i go and check it out now my public ip address doesn't work this doesn't work anymore because they release the public ip address whenever you attach the uh or, sorry whenever you attach the elastic ip address so jfrog artifactory now you can see here even here also public ip address as well as elastic ip address both are same now i need to access my artifactory with this ip address colon 8081 now similar way i need to update my pom.xml code as well okay currently it is referring to this one this is no more valid now okay even if i execute it uh, build right so before that one let's go to tilde slash dot m2 and servers.xml cp dot dot server one one directory up settings right settings.xml to here so i just copied settings.xml nothing but credentials are there for the remote repository but you can see here remote repository remote repository is still referring to this one so it doesn't work it doesn't work at all okay cds minus so mvn deploy you can see here it cannot able to communicate to download the packages okay anyway local packages are there that is the reason it is going but while it is pushing into into this one this ip address is nowhere used right it is currently maybe free or uh, um, uh, it might be used by someone somebody else but i don't have access to this particular one so it cannot be able to do that one now what i need to do i need to regenerate the snippets so jenkins sorry maven right maven maven at one two three so now again if i go to snapshot local you can see here this time it comes with this ip address so what you guys do you use the public elastic ip address and then create this one elastic ip address and then create this one and use this in our system is there any extra charge for using this yes elastic ip is charged in case if we don't use don't use nothing but now it is assigned to your running instance so they don't charge if i stopped it it means that you are unnecessarily holding an elastic ip then they start charging it but it is very minimal what's the price the previous okay 0 0.005 per elastic ip address not associated with an running ec2 instance okay so this is the charge all right so i'm winding up today's class over here